Hello and welcome to Ann Arbor. You are listening to WCBN Sports live coverage of Michigan softball. The Wolverines, winners of six in a row, are playing host to the Nebraska Cornhuskers in game one of a three game set that will go a long way to determining how the Big Ten regular season standing shake out. Hello everybody and welcome to Carroll Hutchins Stadium here in Ann Arbor. My name's Daniel Olson and joining me tonight is my main man, Jack Schmader's on my right and Jack, two teams atop the Big Ten standings midway through this, this softball season of 2024. A couple key players for Nebraska that we've kind of pointed out here in our preparation. Uh, it's a potent offense for the Cornhuskers. Kind of what do you make of this Nebraska lineup tonight? Yeah, certainly we got the, the leadoff hitter, uh, Billy Andrews, and as well partner up the middle, uh, Caitlin Kaneda. Um, there too, uh, Billy Andrews really setting the tempo for really an All-American season, but uh, her partner's right up there with there too. And on the bump for Michigan, Lauren Durkowski, 12 and seven on the season with a 2.37 ERA. She is set to face the aforementioned Billy Andrews in the circle. Ryan's kicks, pitch one of the game, is swung on and fouled back. Dukowski gets ahead in the count early and it's a potent Nebraska offense hitting 300 as a team on the season. Critical for Dukowski and the Michigan pitching staff to get ahead here tonight. As we set, fire for pitch two, just outside. Certainly a factor, uh, the wind here today is blowing in. It will send uh, pretty much any ball seemingly in the right field much further. Durkowski now set, deals the one one. Off speed pitch, catches a lot of the plate. Called strike two, and we apologize we are outside here today. Wind is humming, computers are moving, uh, and we are doing our best here to settle in here. As <laughs> next pitch is dropped by Valamont. It was ball two. Yeah, we have not seen wind like this in the entire setup we had today. So uh, sorry goodness. for any noise you're getting or anything. My goodness, it is gusting right now as Durkowski gets ready in the circle. Now Rox deals the 2-2, a swung on and missed. Early strikeout for Lauren Durkowski. One away here in the top of the first. Now that is a, can't get much bigger of a strikeout than that for the, the Wolverines. Uh, get get the number six for Nebraska off the off the plate, Andrews. I mentioned Andrews hitting 388 as Kaneda now digs in, left-handed Batter's box, Durkowski deals, fastball is upstairs for ball one. Kaneda also a great player. And about 255 on the season, but uh, not one to, to count out. Plenty of production out of her bat this year. Durkowski deals and misses the strike zone again. Count moves to 2-0. and oh. Behind Durkowski, it's Erickson, McVeigh, Langford, and Toll. Third to first in the infield, and then from left to right in the outfield. Sealer, Conway, Stevenson. It's become a pretty typical starting lineup these days for the Wolverines and Lily Valamont behind the dish as well. Durkowski deals. This one's just off the plate. Count moves to 3-0 and oh to Caitlin Kaneda, the sophomore from Cerritos, California. Kowski rocks, deals, pitch upstairs. It's a four pitch walk. We've got our first base runner of the evening. As mentioned earlier, the wind howling from that left field pole to the right field pole. Sun still up above behind the backstop there. May give outfielders some trouble on fly balls here. This is Durkowski's next pitch in there for a strike one to Peyton Cody, steps in the senior hitting 354 on the season. Yeah, we have Kaneda here on first. Uh, she, might, she, may, she may steal at some point. Durkowski rocks, deals, fires. Fastball is 
upstairs for ball one. So one, one, one out here, top of the first in Ann Arbor. Michigan playing host to Nebraska. Michigan 11 and three in Big Ten play. Nebraska eight and three in Big Ten play. Two of the Big Ten's best dueling it out here as Durkowski rocks, fires, and misses the zone. Oh. Just outside, count moves to two and one. Got a good strikeout to start out the inning. Just got to find their, their tempo here, her, find that strike zone again. Kowski fires again. Off-speed pitch is hit high into the air and foul behind the third base dugout. And a great catch by the spectator over there. That is a nice snag. It's windy. It's tough out here today. Yeah. Oh, looks like maybe not keeping the souvenir, though. No, I believe that has to come back into play. But nonetheless, count moves to two and two on Peyton Cody, the senior designated player for Nebraska tonight. Fastball is up. Check swing, did she go? She did. The second strikeout of the night for Durkowski. And a big one at that for the Wolverines. Two down here in the top. That was a big one after walking uh, Kaneda, getting, getting the next batter strikeout. We got two strikeouts so far for her. So she's, Durkowski's certainly starting to feel it. As Samantha Bland digs in, 310 hitter, on the season for Nebraska. She'll take strike one. Fastball caught a lot of the plate there. Yeah, here's that rhythm. She'll be she'll be looking to really keep going. Bland, the freshman from Chino Hills, California. Got a runner on first. 0-1 pitch is in and fouled back over into the netting behind the first base dugout. Count quickly to 0-2. She, uh, she's got a opponents have a 172 average against uh, Durkowski with the uh, two outs so seems to when she starts starts clicking. Kaneda's the runner on first. The 0-2 now from Durkowski is swung on grounded right back to her. She'll take a few steps and toss it over to Kiki Thole as the Wolverines get out of the first unscathed. Couple strikeouts and the easy ground out right back to her for Durkowski. And leading off for the Wolverines will be Ellie Sealer. The order then followed with Indiana Langford, Maddie Erickson, Kiki Thole, Lily Valamont, Janisa Conway, Ella Stevenson, Ava Costales, and Ella McVeigh round out the order. Jack, anybody in particular stuck out to you? Well, obviously, Kiki Thole had a pretty crazy uh, midweek. I think last week, three homers. Uh, it's Michigan State um, as well as got freshman uh, player of the week Ellie Stevens Ella Stevenson sorry um, she's a little later in the lineup but uh, I mean Michigan's lineup just seems to run so deep a lot of players starting or at least playing in almost every game uh, but uh, not I wouldn't say there's much of a bad part in this whole lineup here no nope. it's certainly been consistent as of late as mentioned, Michigan winners of six in a row. They've swept three of their series in the Big Ten. Only kind of blemish was that road trip down to Northwestern. And as we get set for the bottom of the first, we've got Sarah Harness in the circle for Nebraska. She making her 25th appearance of the season. Five wins, three losses, and a 4.65 earned run average to her name. That has been the area of concern for Nebraska this season. Potent offense but not quite the pitching and the defense to back it up. No, and uh, certainly don't want to let this, these Wolverines, you know, start to get to start getting runners on base. So uh, Brask will do their best to prevent that. As Ellie Sealer digs in, hitting 362 on the season. Another factor, the wind, but also that sun shining in. Uh, from uh, from west, shocker, uh, <laughs> <laughs> shining yes. in, and uh, I mean it's real sunny here. That I feel like that Michigan, once it gets a little later, that you know, kind of comes right uh, into your eyes, no matter where you're trying to look. So yeah. it should be another 20 or so minutes before that sun really starts to get into the factor of the outfielder's eyes. As we're now setting underway after a little delay, something dropped into left field. Harness rocks, fires first pitch low, taken by Sealer. Count moves to 1-0. It's a good take. 
Pitcher seeing if she'll, uh, what she can get out of the hitter there maybe. Junior left fielder having a career year across the board as next pitch is fired in there for ball two. Mentioned that career year, career season and run hits an RBI already with still plenty to play for for Sealer. Proved her average by 87 points up from 287 last year. So the next pitch is swung on and lifted into shallow left field. It's gonna get down and bounce away towards the wall and left. Sealer will hold at second. Kind of a funny spinning ball as it landed, but it's a leadoff double for Ellie Sealer and the Wolverines are in business. Certainly that was a, that was a funky one. It seemed to hit the ground and then spin its way right into the wall to make it even more difficult for uh, Bland to, to pick that one up and gun it in, but friend of the or got a double at the leadoff hit, so not a bad start for the Wolverines. And the second baseman, Indiana Langford digs in, known as a slap hitter. It's first pitch is fake bunt gets away from the catcher and Sealer will take third easily. Wolverines in business here with Sealer at third, no out, and Langford up 1-0 in the count. Yeah, we'll see Harness, you know, we get Harness a, and Redwell seem to come together here to, you know. We get a mound visit here. Give time to announce the Nebraska starters. Obviously, Harness in the circle. Bradwell, second part of the battery tonight for Nebraska. And we've got from left to right, Gray, Andrews, Kaneda, Bacon, Bland, Brooke Andrews in center. Excuse me, Billy Andrews at shortstop. And Neal out in right field. As we're set to go here, Harness checks the sign, now kicks and delivers, and Langford lays off of that one, count moves to 2-0. and oh. Yeah, it's a slap hitter. You'll see this infield start to kind of position itself with the left fielder getting ready for a little shallow hit as well. Runner on third is Sealer. Nebraska went scoreless in the top of the first. Michigan a chance here to put one on the scoreboard as Langford runs up and slaps it away foul. Count goes to two and one. Wolverines have been capable of scoring runs in all forms. They've gotten off to hot starts. Also last weekend at Iowa where the comeback kids coming back from deficits in all three is she chops one towards third and doesn't quite beat it out. Excellent play there by Gray to beat the speedy Lankford who is retired. Sealer had to hold at third, and there's now one out in the bottom of the first as Maddie Erickson steps into the right-handed box for the Wolverines. The great job by Gray there, picking that one up quickly, gunning over to first, Sydney. being able to hold the run off and get the out at first. Sydney Gray, the third baseman for Nebraska, now backs into her normal depth as swinging on the first pitch, it's a ground ball to Andrews who bobbles, fires, throws over to first. But the run does score. Ellie Sealer is in. Maddie Erickson will get the RBI on the ground out. Billy Anderson bobbled, still had plenty of time to make the play at first. But Michigan strikes first and takes a 1-0 lead. It's always scary there. Uh, Billy Andrews did a great job, though, at just getting that ball, knocking it down, even though she didn't field it cleanly, able to pick it up and get the out at it first. As Kiki Thol digs in, you mentioned her nice play as of late. She'll take the first pitch low. Big Ten Player of the Week. Very recently, I believe last week. Certainly. From Tinley Park, Illinois. Big power hitter here. Sarna sets, rocks and fires. That pitch is in there for a called strike. Bottom corner, caught it. Count moves to 1-1. One, one. Two outs here, bottom first. Michigan got a run on the ground out by Erickson. Sealer scored after the leadoff double. It's Harness sets and deals as Thol lifts one into left field. Back at the wall, it's over it, but foul. By about three yards or so. That wind is moving hard from left to right, but not enough to sneak it inside that foul post. Oh, a little sneak peek there at uh, maybe what Kiki Thole's looking to do, but uh, 
Nebraska's got the count their way here, so Harness well, looking to get out of this one here. Harness sets rocks and kicks. The one-two is low and away. Bull hitting 281 this season. Leads the team with 12 home runs, 10 of which have come in recent weeks. It's been a hot bat, one of the hot bats at the plate right now for the Wolverines out of a lineup that's had quite a few. Harness now deals. Another pitch low and away, so count is full. 3-2, two, two outs, bottom one. Michigan paid off the sealer leadoff double. Ground ball by Erickson, got her to score. But Thole digs in, harness sets, rocks, fires. This ball swung on and lifted to center field, but right at the center fielder, Brooke Andrews. And Nebraska gets out of it with minimal damage. One hit, one run for the Wolverines who take an early lead here in Ann Arbor. So we're getting some foam balls thrown into the uh, stands here. Yes. But uh, new new broadcast booth for us tonight, certainly. folks. If you're used to the WCBN calls, we very much appreciate your support. And we try to do our best as full-time college students to provide coverage of Michigan softball. And that's a nice reward for uh, dealing with the the, the nature, the outdoors, we were given some nice bucket hats to we wear. Were. So Yes, very festive and yellow. Mm. It's a busy night at the alumni complex. The baseball team is right across the way hosting the Ohio State Buckeyes. But uh, got some softball here. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> as Valamont throws down the second, and we're about ready to get underway here. Just a... A walk for Kaneda, the only base runner for Nebraska in that first inning. Which means Brooke Andrews, who made the play in center to end the last inning, steps in to the box for Nebraska. Hitting 326 on the season, started in all 40 games Nebraska's played. Towski toes in the circle, fires pitches, misses the strike zone. Looked pretty good from our vantage point. I will say we are up behind first base today. It's kind of hard to see inside, outside strike zone. <laughs> As Durkowski now wheels and deals. That one's in there for strike one. Valmont seeming like the first one as well as the second one. So giving yes. their pitcher a little affirmations there. Be fair, both from our vantage point, both of those pitches looked about the same. <laughs> And one call the ball, one call the strike. No outs, top two. Durkowski kicks and fires. That one's in there for strike two. An applaud from the Michigan crowd as we get set for the fourth pitch of this at bat to Brooke Andrews, the senior center fielder in Gretna, Nebraska. Durkowski kicks, fires, just misses off the plate. Already two strikeouts for Durkowski in that first inning. Good eye there with Andrews, already seeing some similar pitches these first four, so. Durkowski now sets, fires a 2-2, is low and in. Quick an off-speed pitch there, and the count is full to Brooke Andrews. Here comes a 3-2. This ball swung on and lifted into shallow center. Two Wolverines players charging, and the play is made by Conway out in center. Lankford had to duck out of the way at the last minute, but Janissa Conway makes a nice play. And the first out at the top of the second is recorded for the Wolverines. Yeah, nearly avoided a big collision there with Indy going out into center field and uh, Conway getting that one, so. We've touched on this wind a few times because it's knocked over our computers, but made that play a little bit tricky as Durkowski deals upstairs to Caitlin Neal, the right fielder, also a senior for Nebraska. We touched on it briefly, but 
young Wolverine team in the lineup. Plenty of freshmen. Nebraska, the opposite. Quite a few seniors here as Durkowski now sets fires. Fastball in there, catches the corner. Count moves to 1-1. One, one. one out, top two. Michigan one, Nebraska zero. The first game of a three-game series. Both these teams, only three losses in Big Ten play. Should be a competitive series throughout, but Michigan the advantage early here as Durkowski deals upstairs. They will check the check swing down at third base, but it was a no-go by Neal. So she'll step back into the left-handed box with a 2-1 count. Kowski now rocks, kicks, fires off-speed pitch, just misses again. Count moves to three and one. Nebraska not swinging the bat very much, really making Durkowski pitch down to them. It's worked out for Durkowski in some ways, but. Uh, she rocks and fires the 3-1. This ball is lifted into shallow left field, but coming on to make the play is Ellie Sealer. So two outs here in the top of the second. And yeah, you wonder, Nebraska overall team average, I believe it's 300 or slightly above 300. Looking to get on base as they seem to normally do through their hits and whatnot. Not not going their way so far, but uh, Sydney Gray looking to change that here for them. Sydney Gray, as mentioned, digs into the right-handed box. Dukowski wheels and fires. Fastball upstairs for ball one. Gray from Tucson, Arizona. Hitting 268 on the season as Durkowski brings the 1 0. That's fouled back by Gray. Fouled straight back. Umpire did a good job getting out of the way of that one. Yes, Catch, not catching one uh, ricocheted. Yes, he did. That netting back there will kick some balls <laughs> back down pretty quickly. Durkowski set and delivers the 1 1. This one's up and away. Some. Slight command issues early for Durkowski, but she's navigating well. Two outs here, top two. Michigan leading by one, 1-0. One Durkowski off-speed pitch is fouled back by Gray. The count moves to two and two, two outs. Sun slowly starting to set behind Carroll Hutchins Stadium. Wind still whipping around as usual. At hint of winter here in Ann Arbor. As Durkowski now deals the 2-2 fastball upstairs, left alone by Gray, and we move to a full count. Durkowski not exactly known for walking uh, batters here, so expect maybe something in the zone. She sets and fires the 3-2. It is low, so Durkowski Suffers her second walk of the evening, and Sydney Gray reaches base. Well, announcers, no, I'm not going to say curse, but uh, a little something, something. Could be. I was fortunate enough to do the baseball game on Tuesday against Toledo. I think I had four or five announcers' curses. It it's kind of fun, though, <laughs> part of it. Bella Bacon digs in. First baseman for the Huskers takes Derkowski's first offering up and away for ball one. Bacon hitting around 290 on the season. Nebraska native from Omaha, the sophomore. Set in the right-handed box as Durkowski deals. It's a ground ball up the middle to Langford, who will toss it on over to McVeigh for the easy force play at second. So the Wolverines, just like in the first, strand a walk of a Cornhusker at first base and take a 1-0 lead into the bottom of the second. Yeah, Nebraska, I mean, they're getting someone on base at least both innings. I think they've just got to look to start moving that runner. Um, it's tough when you're getting on base with two outs. Not much you can do. Uh, but uh, 15 and 15 all time in this series. Michigan won two of three in Lincoln last year. It's 
been some beautiful, beautiful spring days here as of late in Ann Arbor, and fortunately the cold is coming back this evening and into tomorrow, but doesn't stop the university from putting a little bounce house over there <laughs> you for got the your, kids to have fun at. You got your bounce house mentioned in. That's right. uh, there we go. I think maybe we'll have to take a trip over there. I might have to. When's the last time you've been in one of those? It's been a while, so. Certainly has. I did enjoy my bounce houses. You know, what's funny is I was listening to some broadcasts before, and I guess that bounce house is just a constant thing out here. I mean, what's better? Come watch some... Some Wolverines play some softball and get some bounces in. As Lily Valamont digs in, the catcher batting from the right-handed side takes Harness's first pitch off the plate for ball one. Valamont from Trenton, Michigan, freshman and hitting 248 on the season. He's done an excellent job for the Wolverines this year and Harness deals fastball upstairs that Valamont lays off. Count moves to two and oh. Yeah, another one of those players who's played every game uh, in the season so far for them. So, you know you're getting out of her. Good, solid player. It's been a productive freshman class for the Wolverines. As the 2-0 pitch is on the way. And again, upstairs, count moves to 3-0. and Yeah, you mentioned productive pre freshman class. We got four of them coming up uh, in the lineup here, the first one being Valamont. Valmont, the, the five hitter for the Wolverines this evening. As Harness's next offering also misses the plate and a four pitch walk to start the bottom half of the second for the Wolverines. Valmont reaches first. As Janisa Conway digs in again, another freshman hitting 233 on the season. Started in every game so far for the Wolverines. Gets on base at a 37% clip. She'll offer a bunt attempt that's foul. Bradwell still threw down. Conway, I think, beat it out regardless, but again. Just kind of flexing the speed. Why, why not <laughs> get down, get a little sprint Get the legs going. loose. Yeah, you know? get, keep the legs loose. It's a little cold, a little, little windy, that sun about to drop. Valmont not exactly known for her stealing of bases, so maybe not something that Nebraska needs to keep an eye on here. As Conway takes the next delivery, low and away for a ball. 1-1 one, one count, bottom two, no outs. Lily Valmont, four-pitch walk, is standing on first. Wind still moving from left field to right. Sun still slowly setting. In the background here as Conway tries another bunt attempt and misses. So the count will move to one and two here. All the way from Olivehurst, California. Saw so him making a good good play in the top half of the inning there. In Certainly center field. did as she takes the one two offering upstairs for ball two. Not exactly the position uh, Harness wants to find herself in. Maybe get that count, keep that count in, in her favor, but 2-2 two, two ain't too bad. She kicks and deals, this much is swung on and missed as Conway goes down on strike. So one out in the bottom of the second, the first strike out of the night for Sarah Harness. Here's your... Uh, I believe two-time freshman of the week this season, including last week. It is Ella Stevenson hitting 462 in her last 10 games. That's silly. It is. <laughs> <laughs> On an absolute tear, one of the many Michigan bats that has warmed up as the weather has. I believe it is something like 167 in her first 22 games. 308 in the second 22 game, or since, you know what I'm saying. Freshman started to figure it out. Takes the 0-1 offering and fouls it back. So quickly 0-2 on Stevenson. That's what you want to see, though, in a team. You know, we're starting to wind down on the Big Ten season. Got a few more series for both teams. But 
everyone's seen from Michigan to, to come. They're getting they're getting real good right about now. They're heating up, getting in the swing of things, literally and figuratively. Michigan is starting to play there. Some good softball as the 0-2 is fouled back and out of the stadium, I believe. Yeah, no cars uh, are in danger here, unlike at the base baseball stadium over there. No, they are not. I've dinged a few cars in my time playing, mm. I think. Homers, I assume. Oh, yeah. As the 0-2, again, is swung on and lifted into the infield. Easy play for the third baseman, Gray, who comes underneath it, makes the play. So two outs as Stevenson is retired. And the designated player, Costolis, will dig in for the Wolverines. And hitting 308 on the season, 413 on base percentage. Another, again, as mentioned, impressive freshman. She swings at the first pitch and knocks it away foul. You mentioned a few walk-offs last weekend against Iowa. She was one of the hitters who got a walk-off. RBI single in the seventh it was. It was an impressive series against Iowa, a sweep here at home. And fans were treated to some classic comebacks. Michigan was down seven, five, and two. And each of those three games as Costales swings a hits a high hopper to Billy Andrews over at short, who gobbles it up, fires over to first, and Costales is retired. So Michigan unable to take advantage of the leadoff walk here, and we'll head to the top of the third with the score remaining Michigan one, Nebraska zero. Yeah, good job Harness or by by Sarah Harness there, keeping keeping runner at first, not allowing any balls to really be dangerously put in play. Um, She'll look to continue that in the, the next inning. It's interesting. It's an interesting Nebraska team. And 25 and 16 on this season, 8 and 3 in the conference. They took two out of three from Rutgers last weekend, and they're actually 6 and 2 on the road this year. So potentially a little inexperienced, but also quite capable of playing in the opposing team's home field it's a tough one to, to come to and try to take one though as Michigan's 10 and0 at home here um, not uh, I believe yeah they have some crazy home statistics I can't remember them exactly I'll get them at some point but uh, I think they're hitting 333 <laughs> this year at home I mean that's just I mean that's what's sleeping in your own bed two six to. era and in nine games they're outscoring opponents 71 to 28. So dominant <laughs> yeah. here at home for the Wolverines. Is but what's the perfect matchup? Uh, a Nebraska team that's got offensive prowess, you know, pretty much from top to bottom. Certainly. So Nebraska will offer quite the challenge this weekend. And as mentioned in the intro, it's pretty key for the regular season standings. Both teams with three losses entering this series is Ava Bredwell, the junior catcher for the Husker, steps in. Derkowski now sets, rocks, kicks, and fires. First pitch outside for ball one. 10-0 with the bounce house in attendance, I presume. <laughs> Love that thing. <laughs> Dierkowski now sets. Throws this one oh, this coming one straight at off. us, but fortunately there's a roof there. Man, they're lucky I didn't catch that one because they might have signed me up on the team if they saw. Mm how my hands were going to be yeah. grabbing that one. I I believe that. Dukowski wants a different softball. She'll get one. But, yeah, I think, you know, out of all the people I know, I think you might have the best hands I've ever seen. Mm. <laughs> Former fifth-grade rec ed baseball <laughs> player. As Dukowski deals the 1-1, upstairs and away. Count moves to 2-1. and one. Michigan 1, Nebraska 0 here. Sun starting to... Kind of set in the background of Carol Hutchins Stadium here. The Hutch, as they call it. Dukowski now deals 2-1, is up and away again. It's Redwell laying off those a couple of upstairs heaters, and we've got a 3-1 offering on the way. Redwell bottom of the lineup, but hitting about 325 on the year so far. Big, big player for them. Also has played in a lot of games for Nebraska as Dukowski Fires in a fastball for strike two. 
count is now full. Anticipation builds, and Durkowski deals a 3-2. It's fouled back. We'll do it again. It's been an impressive season for Lauren Durkowski, the ace of this pitching staff, although Lauren Hain, excuse me, Hain has done an excellent job as well. Aaron Hain, my apologies. Is this ball, this 3-2 is lifted into center field, and can of corn for Janisa Conway. But that pitching staff of Hain and Durkowski has, has done the Wolverines wonders. Hannah George has also done a nice job in relief as of late as Billy Andrews digs in. Average now down to 385. <laughs> 15 homers on the year for her, 35 RBIs. Durkowski sets and fires. First pitch fastball upstairs, Andrews Went down swinging in the first to lead off the game. One of two strikeouts, I believe, for Durkowski. Two strikeouts, two walks, and second time around for him, she probably saw what Durkowski had in the first at bat, made some adjustments, looking to get on base here, maybe score a run for for her team. Dukowski's second pitch was also taken outside for ball two, and she gets set and deals. Third one swung on and missed, so count moves two and one. One out here, top three from Ann Arbor. Michigan scored off a leadoff double by Ellie Sealer back in the first. It's her hot streak at the plate continued, and Dukowski now sets and deals another fastball that just inside to the dismay of the Michigan faithful. Count moves to three and one. It's, it's been clean so far for Durkowski, two and a third, two Ks, couple walks though, and the pitch count already at 44. Your top three, and she fires at 3-1. This one nicked and fouled straight back by Andrews, so the count will move to three and two. Yeah, Andrews seems to be waiting for some sort of pitch here. Take that far as she can. Certainly a lot of pop in that bat. Durkowski sets, fires, deals. This one's lifted into center field again. Janisa Conway's been busy so far, and she's been perfect so far. Three for three on fly balls to center. And Billy Andrews is retired for the second time tonight. Two outs here, top three. Side relief there, or maybe not relief. I'm sure Dukowski goes into that thinking she's got the better edge, but uh, Michigan yeah, getting, looking to retire their, their best batter there. Getting Andrews out has been hard this season. I've done it twice so far tonight as Dukowski deals a strike in there to Caitlin Kaneda, who reached on a walk in the first, the sophomore. Valmont really liked that uh, pitch there. She's been awfully helpful, I feel like telling uh, Durkowski what's, what's good, what's bad. As Durkowski deals again and a nod of confirmation for Valmont as that one's chopped weakly foul down the third baseline, but count moves to 0-2. And, and somewhat unfamiliar spot so far for Durkowski who's just gotten behind a few batters. But a chance to get out of the top of the third here without allowing a base runner. She rocks and deals. Fastball upstairs. Canada will step out, couple practice swings. Durkowski re-enters the circle, checks the sign. And gets ready to deliver a one-two. It's on the way. Off-speed pitch is rattled into the net. That was a nice little pitch mix there. Hit her with the seeming like fastball riser, a few pitches and then slight off-speed, get the timing thrown off of uh, Canada. So we'll do the one-two over after the foul ball that went over the third base dugout. Durkowski readies and fires. Left alone upstairs, but seemed to hit her spot. Balamont's affirmations continue behind the plate. Nebraska 
red tops and pinstripe pants as Durkowski deals and Kaneda fouls this one off down the first baseline. Michigan in their home whites with blue sleeves, blue pants. Stirrups, the popular option tonight. I believe every Michigan player is wearing those. As we ready ourselves for a 2-2, Durkowski deal, swung on and missed. It was high and out of the zone, but Kaneda went chasing. And the Wolverines keep their 1-0 advantage into the bottom of the third. That's a big time inning there for Wolverine to Anderkowski in particular, starting to get through the part of that lineup at the end there and sit them down. It's a good way to go into the next one. And for Nebraska, I mean, you're just looking, you know, they're still hitless on the day so far, looking to get something in there. So it's been a quiet start for the hot Nebraska bats as we've got a dizzy bat race out in right field. Nothing better than the old dizzy bat race. Two contestants, multiple times, and oh my. Oh, <laughs> ones. One is stumbling and bumbling her way across oh. the finish line. The other didn't even start. No. A little dizzy there. But a little fun out in right field here, trying to stay warm as well. It's That wind is starting to have a little chill in it. April 19th, 2024. What a beautiful day for throughout. Very few clouds in the sky. Only one hit in this ball game, by the way. One run. One hit, one run, as Ella McVeigh, the shortstop for the Wolverines, digs in to the left-handed side of the box to face the right-handed pitcher for Nebraska, Sarah Harness. McVeigh hitting 303 on the season. Has also been a constant in that Michigan offense. As she lines a single into left field. And on cue, the second hit of the ball game. Excellent piece of hitting by McVeigh. Get the Wolverine offense in gear. It's been a leadoff batter has reached in every inning now for the Wolverines. Paid it off in the first, not in the second. Now Sealer hitting 366 on the season. Digs in, light off with the double and scored a run in the first. McVeigh only one stolen base on the year in one attempt as Harness deals a first pitch fastball in there for strike one. Sort of a bloop double with a weird bounce for Sealer back in the first. Harness deals, Sealer bunts. Play is made at first for Nebraska. Bella Bacon came charging in, turned. Good coverage by Kaneda. So Sealer's retired, but the job is done as McVeigh advances over to second safely. Yeah, avoid the chance of that double play there uh, by moving the, the runner to second. As Indiana Langford digs in, she grounded out to third in her first at bat. Slap hitter runs up and takes ball one. It, McVeigh got a big jump over there at second, but holds. Yeah, she, she kind of, as a slap hitter, you know, McVeigh can kind of take some space there because that ball's going to go over to the left with no force on second. Kind of play with the fielder's heads a little bit. Harness deals, and Lankford chops one over the Nebraska dugout. As mentioned, Nebraska's third baseman Gray is playing in here quite a bit, so... McVeigh's got an opportunity to cause a little bit of chaos, a little bit of stress on the Nebraska defense. As Harness gets set to deliver a 1-1 to Lankford, it's popped up and caught by Harness coming off the mound. It was a bump, bunt attempt that did not get down. Great play there by Harness to react to that bunt and get in there before it could drop. Not not the best bunt attempt either by Langford, but. Maddie 
Runner still on second. Maddie Erickson digs in. She's got the lone RBI of tonight's game and back in the first. Uh, two outs here in the third, and Erickson will take that first offering from Harness low and away. I think 364 on the season, and runners in scoring position, 320. OPS 999. Looking to get that uh, <laughs> above 1,000. Although it's kind of a fun number, but I'm sure she would love <laughs> her stats to look even better. But uh, as she takes ball two up and away, a non competitive pitch from Harness there. And McVeigh on second, let off with a liner to left as the third pitch is in the dirt. Have to wonder if Nebraska's being careful here with the open base at first, although Kiki Thole, reigning Big Ten Player of the Week on deck. Harness checks her wrist for the sign. Rocks and deals. This ball swung up, popped up toward us, and foul. Into the stand, swinging on 3-0. Maddie Erickson fouls one away over the first base side. Pretty packed crowd here tonight, and that means to find the only row without fans in. They're lucky again, they're lucky I wasn't there ready to mm. catch it. <laughs> As we get set for the 3-1, Harness delivers. Erickson takes low for ball four. Second free pass issued out by Sarah Harness this evening. As Kiki Thole digs in. Big hitters love situations like this. Got your runners in first and second. Thole hitting 279 on the year, but 3-3 three, three, three with runners in scoring position. Chance to widen the lead here. Harness delivers. This one's low in the dirt, blocked by Bradwell. Runners won't advance, but we'll get a quick mound visit here. Yeah, Harness. Rhonda Ravel is out for Nebraska. Able to escape the other two innings with the, uh, it's a lie, sorry. Last inning with uh, without any damage done, but uh, not a good sign. Allowing, allowing the runners to get on base Certain, like this. Certainly an opportunity here for the Wolverines. It's been game with Two great offenses coming in. And so far, limited offense. Combined two hits between the two teams. Pitch count is lower than uh, Dorkowski's, though. Around 40 for, for Harness. So. We are bottom three, two outs. Count is 1-0. Batter Kiki Thole, pitcher Sarah Harness for Nebraska. We're in Ann Arbor. Michigan plays host, and we're set to play. The 1-0 comes in, and Thole fouls it off straight back. Count moves to 1-1. One, one. It's a good comeback after the, the mound visit. We've got a 1-1 one, one count. And here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. It's low and away. Again, Harness falls behind in the count 2-1. Runners on first and second. Erickson reached on a walk. McVeigh started the inning off with a single. The 2-1 is delivered. It's chopped right towards Billy Andrews, working right. And there's a force play at third. That play is made after a small toss there by Andrews. And Nebraska gets out of the inning with no damage. It remains Michigan one, Nebraska zero here in Ann Arbor. As we get set for the top of the fourth. Yeah, Cody Bland and Brooke Andrews up, uh, up next for Nebraska. Looking to maybe get Durkowski out of the, the swing, of, or out of the, the out of her, her 
her, her, yeah, her swing, the swing of things that she's in, you know, she's got a good tempo going. Wow, yeah. we. But um, uh, <laughs> my yeah. goodness. I was trying. I said it too many times. I was hoping your already. your dad jokes would be as good as your hands, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We thank you for tuning in to WCBN Sports. The official, the unofficial official voice of Michigan athletics. I mean, who covers softball as good as us? I'm not sure there's many out there. Um, whole variety of folks will be on the call for softball this season. Lucky enough to be able to do this game alongside you today. Mm. Provide it for the viewers, the listeners. It's been a fun one so far. Quiet offensively, but some big time pitching when needed from both Harness and Durkowski. Durkowski, three pretty quiet innings. Only two walks, is three strikeouts. Pitch count is at 56, but Peyton Cody digs in. Hitting 348 on the year as she takes a first pitch. Fastball for strike one from Durkowski. Yeah, she'll be looking to change what happened last time. I believe the strikeout. And uh, get on base here, get her team's first hit. The 0 1 for Durkowski just misses. Count moves to 1 and 1. It does appear we have some action in the Nebraska bullpen. We'll keep you updated on that. Unable to see number at this time, but nonetheless, Durkowski sets, fires. Fastball in there for strike two. So 1 2 count here on Peyton Cody. 0 for 1 today, struck out back in the first. It's three, four, five hitters due up for Nebraska. Kowski rocks, delivers his pitch upstairs, so 2-2 two, two count. A yeah, good check, not check, but uh, holding the swing there by uh, Cody. A little too high for it to be a strike. So we get set for the 2-2, off speed, just misses. Michigan crowd thought that was over the plate. But we've got another full count here. Anticipation builds as we see the 3-2 pitch and it's inside. Durkowski lost the command and Cody reaches first. The third walk of the evening. the first leadoff batter on for Nebraska. Peyton Cody, zero st stolen base attempts on the year so far. So Michigan maybe not too worried. As McKinley Maleka will pinch run here for Cody. Never mind, I lied. Thank you. <laughs> Samantha Bland, the freshman digs in for Nebraska. Got a quick timeout of sorts it seems. Sun, at least for the stadium's purpose, completely set as the shadow of the backstop has engulfed the outfield. Players keeping the shade down though, looking cool. You might as well look cool while you can. Yeah. If I looked cool wearing shades, I would do it more, but I don't. Eh. So I don't. Believe in yourself. Well, maybe I just need a better pair of shades. Yeah. No outs, top four, runner on first. Tarkowski rocks, deals, and fires a fastball in there for strike one to Samantha Bland. 0 for 1 here today. Again, McKinley Maleka on first. It was... Peyton Cody, who drew that leadoff walk for the Huskers. Still looking for their first hit of the evening. Durkowski now deals the 0-1. This one is fouled straight back, but in play. And Valamont makes the play, and a good one at that. As Bland is retired. Yeah, those are tough as the catchers sometimes. You got to rip the mask off and then track the ball down. And I don't know, wind swirling, whatever it is. Good play there. 
Certainly was an excellent play by Valamont. And continues to provide great value behind the plate for the Wolverines. Durkowski deals. This pitch is fouled back into the netting again. Valamont was chasing it. Durkowski has been getting a lot of foul tips this game so far. It really feels like Nebraska sent quite a few straight back yeah. to that screen back there as Brooke Andrews just did, 0 for 1 today, and one out top four, the runner on first is Maleka, as Durkowski deals, off-speed pitch is chopped to third, chance for a double play here. Over to Lankford at second, they get the first out, but on to first, and the runner is safe. Andrews using that speed to get over there. So fielder's choice for the Wolverines, they pick up the second out here in the fourth. Yeah, maybe not the smoothest uh, throw down to second there for Langford to get it and gun it to first, but also some, some good running Certainly. there to, to get to first before the throw. Took a while to get out of Erickson's glove and then Langford's glove as well as Durkowski deals upstairs. Valamont jumps out of her stance to catch and fires it back. But maybe not the cleanest transition for the Wolverines, although not sure it would have mattered with Andrews, the center fielder, hustling on down to first. Two outs, top four, 1-0 count here to Caitlin Neal, who swings and misses at Durkowski's 1-0 offering. Count moves to 1-1. One, one. Michigan 1, Nebraska 0. It was a leadoff double for Ellie Sealer in the first. He came on to score two batters later on Maddie Erickson's ground ball. As Durkowski deals an off-speed pitch that's low. We talked about it briefly, but if you're just joining us, Nebraska hitting 300 as a team this year have been held hitless so far through three and two thirds. Durkowski winds deals in this Fastball up in the zone is fouled back out of the stadium over the dugout, third base dugout. And 2-2 two -two count now, two outs. Tchaikovsky looking to get out of this one, get a nice strikeout to end the inning. Three walks, three strikeouts for Tchaikovsky. Deals the 2-2, two -two, swung on and fouled back. We'll do it again. Two outs. Andrews, the runner at first, running on contact. Neal looking to add to her 16 RBIs on the season so far. Maybe get a nice hit here to get Brooke Andrews all the way home from first. So we do the 2-2 again. Durkowski deals. This one swung and fouled back again. So good battle here from Caitlin Neal and Lauren Durkowski. She's getting up there in the pitch count. I know she normally can go for a while, it seems, for some of these games. We do the 2-2 again. This ball's inside, and we've got a time. The runner went, but it clipped the elbow of Caitlin Neal, who will make her way down to first. So Nebraska here still hitless, but has reached base via three walks and a hit by pitch. And now here in the top of the fourth, only down one run with two outs. Runners on second and first as Sydney Gray digs in. Drew a walk in her first plate appearance and 10 home runs on the season for Gray. Top four, two out. Two runner on, Durkowski deals to Gray who lines one into center and this one's gonna get past Janisa Conway who rifles it into short. We've got a play at the plate but two runs are gonna score for Nebraska. And with one swing of the bat, Sydney Gray has delivered for the Cornhuskers. And they've got a 2-1 advantage. It's a big time hit there from, from Gray. Able to put that one in the, the left center field gap and able to get two runners home, get to second pretty safely too. Somewhat close play at the plate, not really, but uh, nice, nice, nice attempt there. Two outs, top four is we've got another hit batter. Command for Dukowski starting to become an issue and got a 
mound visit here. It'll be Jennifer Brundage out there to help calm Durkowski down, but this game has flipped. It was Michigan was in control. It's a leadoff walk for Nebraska. Two outs and then a hit by pitch. And then Sidney Gray picking up Nebraska's first hit of the game, a double that one hop to the wall out in left center. It was thrown in quickly by Conway, but not much of a chance for a play at the plate. And Nebraska played a two runs on that one hit to take the advantage here. And after another hit by pitch, again, Nebraska's got two runners on base. First and second as Breadwell digs in, hitting 322 this season. 0 for 1 though tonight. Durkowski deals off speed pitch in there for strike one. Yeah, Breadwell the catcher, 362 with runners in scoring position. So dangerous up there. So Nebraska offense starting to come to life. Durkowski rocks and fires the 0 1 and Another hit batter. This one caught Redwell on looked like kind of a painful spot yeah. right on the <laughs> knee. I was going to say like no reaction champ. from her, but <laughs> I, think I think I may have needed a yeah. bag of ice or three. Yeah. Um, but the bases are now juiced for Nebraska and not who you want up at the plate if you're the Wolverines with Billy Andrews, Nebraska's best hitter at the dish. Durkowski has had the edge so far with the strikeout and got Andrews out as well. And first pitch is a fastball upstairs, so. Hitting 429 runners in scoring positions. 666, or 667 bases loaded. That's a fun one. Not sure how many times you probably really get that, but. Uh, two for three probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's As the 1-0 delivery from Durkowski is lifted high in the air to center. Conway's got room, Conway's got a catch. And a sigh of relief from the Wolverine crowd as Billy, and Billy Andrews got into one. Wasn't quite enough, but three hit by pitches, a walk, and a double to left center. Sees Nebraska take a 2-1 lead after the top of the fourth. Yeah, that was a great inning by Nebraska. Maybe not the most orthodox way of going about getting runners on base, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Runs are runs, and they may only have one hit, but they're, they're winning right now, so. We got Harness back out there for the Cornhuskers. So we got a fun trivia. I believe this might have been said already, but which Wolverine was named Big Ten Freshman of the Week? for the second time this season. Hmm. I that would be Ella Stevenson. Yes, yes. Congrats to us on some decent prep. Mm. As I put on my winter coat over my flannel coat. Surprise, you've had some fire calls so far. <laughs> and you're still a little chilly. Yeah. Just, get, just getting warm, you know. Yeah, just my voice might be fire, but my body is not. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, Michigan got this three-game series versus Nebraska. Then I believe they're off to Oakland this this week. Yep. Then Penn added State. A game. Added a game against Oakland Late, this yeah. week. So one, one game Oakland at Penn State, and then uh, home against Notre Dame, home against OSU. As Valamont digs in for the Wolverines and fouls the first pitch from Harness off her front foot. But you mentioned it, Michigan been at home as of late. Their weekend series with Iowa was here. Had some home and home with Michigan State earlier this week. It was also here. So it's a stretch of eight straight games at home for the Wolverines as Harness delivers an off-speed pitch low. Moving the count to one and one on Lily Valamont. Two one Nebraska, bottom four, Michigan at the dish. But Michigan winners of six in a row. 
Harness rocks and deals a fastball that skips in there. Moving the count to two and one. Belmont drew a walk in her first plate appearance, ahead in the count here. Two runs, one hit for Nebraska, one run on two hits for the Wolverines. Harness delivers and Valamont rips one into right field. We'll have a play at first, but Valamont's there safely. And easily, I should add. And on cue, hit number three for the Wolverines tonight. Yeah, it was a nice little bloop into right field, and I was wondering if Neil would step up and try to gun it in. Always a fun, fun theory in my head that I like to try to play out, you know, in MLB the show. Can I just get the <laughs> guy out at first? But uh, it's a good attempt there. Good base running, too, by Valamont to get on. Conway, the freshman, digs in, fakes a bunt, and takes the first pitch. Waiting on the call, I believe it was a ball, as potentially some equipment uh, needs to be switched out for Brad for Breadwell. The Nebraska catcher. Corners are in here for Nebraska. 1-0 pitch, no outs. Valmont on first. The bunt is down, and it's successful for Conway. The close play at first. They call her safe. The speed from Janisa Conway and Michigan responding by getting their first two runner, first two batters here in the bottom of the fourth on base. Man, nothing gets the crowd more pumped than a, a bunt getting on base. It's a, you think it's, a, it's an easy hit, but at the same time, you're having to run as fast as you can down that first baseline to get on base. Conway. That adva great advantage with that running bunt as Maddie Ramey will pinch run there at second. It was a very close play at first. The bunt got down and was fielded, I believe, by Breadwell, the catcher. It's interesting they do the pinch runner after Belmont was able to get to second. And then they and then they throw the pinch runner in there, but uh, we got Ramey, like Daniel said, on second. As Stevenson digs in and swings at the first pitch, it's blooped into the infield. Easy play for Billy Andrews. Believe it would have been infield fly, regardless. Not the best piece of contact there for the the freshman, but Stevenson's been hot. Obviously, just mentioned coming off that. Freshman of the Week award in the Big Ten. <laughs> Two of them this year, believe Two it. Two of them this season. I, we <laughs> keep harping on that, but it's it's an impressive, impressive freshman class, and Stevenson's been a big part of that as Harness delivers to another member of that class. Castalis takes the first pitch low for ball one. So Nebraska two. They just got those in the top of the fourth. Michigan scoreless since that run in the first, but two on here with one out as Castales lays off a pitch upstairs for ball two. Castales hits about 375 with the runners in scoring position. Few homers on the year, five, 21 RBIs. Came up clutch against Iowa last weekend. Chance to come up big here for the Wolverines again as Harness delivers Another pitch low, count moves to 3-0, and, and Breadwell's going to go out to talk to her pitcher and calm her down here as this game's starting to heat up a little bit here. It was not a lot of offensive production until the past 10 minutes or so. We did mention Nebraska is a comeback team as well. Maybe not comeback in the same way Michigan was these last few games, but... Nebraska, I believe, 15 of their 25 victories have come when they are at a deficit at some point. So, although maybe only down one nothing after the first inning, but uh, Harness deals a 3-0. It skips in there low, and the Wolverines have them loaded. Nebraska looks to maintain that lead here, but it's up to McVeigh for Michigan to maybe make a change there. And 
McVeigh digs in, but it looks like we may have a pitching change here. And that's what we're going to have is head coach Rhonda Ravel for Nebraska will come out. Take the ball from Harness, who went three and a third tonight. Kept the Wolverines in check for the most part, but leaves with them loaded. Four hits, one run, three walks. As it's Kaylin Kinney who will take the bump, excuse me, the circle for Nebraska. We're waiting to see if it was two fours on that jersey or just one. Kaylin Kinney, 15 wins and four saved on the year. Only one of six pitchers in the college softball world this year to be doing that. And uh, she has gotten the win or the save, obviously, in those 19 games I mentioned in 19 of their 25 wins. So key player for Nebraska. It's been a big part of their success this year. So Nebraska pulling out all the stops to limit the Wolverines here is, I believe the sun has now actually creeped behind the trees, maybe just a few minutes away from official sunset, but beautiful day here in Ann Arbor. Wind has calmed down quite a bit. Our computers quite literally were moving uh, 40 minutes ago. Speaking of moving, if you, anyone is participating in the big house race on ah. Sunday, you get a free admission to the softball games using your... Uh, your race on any form of identification that you ran in that race. Right. So why not come on down, see the third game of the series here. Support Cheer. the softball, yes. Exactly. And maybe say hi to your WCBN broadcasters yes. in the booth. We would love that. We will not be here. No. But we've got a great crew on softball for the rest of this weekend and the rest of the season as well. WCBN, your best option for Michigan softball, unless you want to pay 10 bucks a month <laughs> for BTN Plus, which you could do, but we think we're better than that. So McVeigh steps in, and good block by Breadwell on Kinney's first deal. McVeigh hits 381 with runners in scoring position. It's a nice 1,000 with bases loaded. Well, she's 1,000 today, one for <laughs> one, hitting 311 on the season. Only seven RBI would be increase her total and an opportunity to do so right now. Bases are juiced. Castellas at first, Conway at second, and pinch runner Ramey at third. It's a chopper back to Kinney at on the mound, so they'll get the force play at home, but McVeigh reaches for safely, so bases loaded still for Michigan, but now two outs here. Good work by Nebraska there, preventing the run. You know, stopped some of the bleeding so far. Look to get out of, <laughs> get out of this inning. Uh, no damage done. Ellie Sealer digs in one for one today. She let off with the double score to run. She takes the first offering from Kinney low and away. So Sealer double in the first and then a walk. Four homers, 14 RBI on the season. Been a career year for the junior. This could be a moment that sort of Look back on at the end of the year what's been a great year for her, and this would be a great moment to tack on that. She takes the second offering up and away for ball two. Two outs, bottom four, bases juice for Michigan. This one skipped in there low, so count moves to 3-0. and oh. Big stop there by Breadwell. That pitch was well low and away, but the 3-0 pitch on the way from Sealer. Your Kenny has to be in the zone. Crowd here in Ann Arbor 
Watches as that one is called for a strike. Caught that low corner away from Sealer, but we'll do the 3-1. Two outs, bottom four, Nebraska two, Michigan one. Kenny in relief of Harness, who went three and a third, trying to get her teammate out of a jam. Delivers, strike two. Sealer doesn't agree. Bat stayed on her shoulder. And this is, can feel the tension here, folks. Full count, two outs, bases loaded. Michigan trying to get some of those run back, runs back. Kenny sets, rocks, deals. This one is chopped foul. So Sealer fights that one off and stays alive. Caught the end of the bat. And we'll do the 3-2 over. Kenny looking to get out of this jam here. Like you mentioned, full count. This is some great softball we've got going on. Certainly is, Kenny. Rocks and deals the 3-2 again. This one is low and will walk in a run here. Conway comes in to score, and this game is tied at two apiece. Great eye and great at bat from Ellie Sealer. And we've got a 2-2 ball game. Yeah, Sealer had a couple pitches there, bat on her shoulder watching him go by. Maybe not fully believing Kinney was would pitch in the zone to her. Able to get that run in. As head coach Bonnie Thole has a few words for Indy Lankford. It's uh, a lot of hugs and smiles down there. It seems like a pretty fun conversation to be a part of. I'm not quite sure what it could be about other than trying to boost the confidence hey, hit the of ball. her sophomore <laughs> not, second baseman. Not in a mean way, but <laughs> yeah. score some runs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to be encouragement. Yeah, maybe if you hit a home run, you'll get a bouncy house ticket. Mm. That would be enough to send me up there swinging for the fences. Of course, Langford will try and get on any way possible. That I mean, Michigan scores a couple runs, but the slap hitter hitting 291 this season, 12 RBI. Kenny Rocks deals a fastball in there on the outer half of the plate for strike one. Lankford 0 for 2 today. Good location there by Kenny coming back from the, it's always tough walking in a run, to come back with confidence and she did well there. Kenny Rocks and deals the 0-1, Lankford swings and fouls it away over that Nebraska third base dugout. So count moves 0-2, two. two outs bottom four. Michigan got one in the bottom of the first. Nebraska finally broke through with two in the top of the fourth, and the Wolverines have responded here in the bottom of the fourth, grabbing a run on the bases loaded two-out walk by Ellie Sealer. But now 0-2 count to Langford. Base is still juiced. Pivotal pitch here. Comes the 0-2. Off-speed is low and away, so we'll do a 1-2. Langford 3-3-3, three, 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 runners in scoring position. Looking to add to her RBI tally of 12 on the year so far. Kenny deals and Langford check swings and fouls it away. So she'll stay alive and live to see another 1-2 pitch. It's an important battle here. Again, two, two teams that playing some good ball in the Big Ten as the crowd Begins to get into it here. Here's the 1-2 delivery from Kinney is low and away. So 2-2 two -two upcoming and a good battle by Langford. Yeah, good way to come back in the count for Langford there. So Kinney's looking to put her away here. Sophomore second baseman with the big opportunity in this ball game. Bases loaded, two out, bottom four. The 2-2 two -two delivery. Lankford leaves it alone, and it just misses that outside corner, so count is full. And just like the last at-bat for Ellie Sealer, we've got a full count, two outs. Kaylin Kinney trying to get out of this with minimal damage for Nebraska. She rocks, kicks, fires, and swung on and missed. Lankford went chasing, I think, a little bit, but Michigan gets one back. Evens the score at two in the bottom of the fourth, but leaves them loaded. 
as we head to the top of the fifth. It was a couple of hits in that inning for the Wolverines. A couple walks. Yeah. Only one run, but we've got a fun softball game on our hands here, partner. We do. Nebraska still only the one hit, but uh, looking to add to that one. As we have Drakowski back on the mound, I believe. Yeah. So. Going to come back out around 79 pitches. As we've got a substitution offensively for Michigan. Janelle Alak was into the game at second, replacing Lankford. That must have been what the conversation was about uh, maybe earlier on between Bonnie Thole. But uh, up to bat. Nada for Nebraska. It's about 250 lead off. Looking to reach the bases here. Reached on a walk back in the first and then did not reach in her second appearance. But Durkowski's set and so are we for the top of the fifth. Durkowski deals off speed high. Kaneda really crouched over in her batting stance, quite the small zone. As Durkowski rocks and deals the 1-0, which is chopped weakly to first. Plenty of time for Thole to make the play. One down here, top five. That was a good, uh, good field, not not too difficult fielding there. Just kind of, you know, like Dan said, chopped down, a little slow grounder, but they'll got to make sure you get that one in the mitt and make the tag more, most importantly too on, on the first base. As Peyton Cody digs in. She, critical part of those two runs for Nebraska. She chops one foul here. Down the first baseline. So the count moves 0-1, 2-2 here, top five. One out, Derkowski, a rough fourth inning, but done a good job since limiting this potent Nebraska offense. She sets and deals the 0-1 up and away, so count moves to 1-1. Yeah, Cody last time up, I believe, walked to reach the base. Adds, uh, she looks to do some more of the same here. The righty, Cody, facing the righty, Durkowski. Durkowski's pitch is again up and away, so 2-1 count here. Valmont that time told her, settle down a little bit, or just keep that pitch a little lower, which maybe she was just trying to say. It really seemed like a bit of a high release there from Durkowski, who's set again. And rocks back onto that left foot, runs forward onto the right, and fastball's upstairs, so. Last three upstairs for Dirk. Count moves to three and one on Peyton I like that. Cody. Dirk. Yeah, it's a good name. I just heard it in the crowd. I believe gets used often though. She delivers this time. It's fouled away by Cody. So full count here. Competitive game. Sort of the game within the game tonight has been competitive. Mm. Pitcher versus batter. A lot of three, two counts, a lot of six, seven, eight, nine pitch at bats, and got another good one unfolding right now. The three, two from Drakowski, swung on and missed. She got Peyton Cody swinging at a pitch upstairs, and a big out for the Wolverines as they look to keep their momentum. Another great comeback for Drakowski there in the count. Fourth strikeout of the game for Durkowski. Able to work it back. 
Samantha Bland digs in. Durkowski deals. This ball is lifted into the air down the left field line. Just not enough room for Sealer to make a play as it goes over the wall. That flag out there in center, that American flag has now gone limp. Imagine probably an hour ago that ball was blowing back into play. Mm. It can move a computer. It can move a softball, I'd imagine. But Durkowski ahead here, 0-1. Two outs, top five. Only given up one hit tonight, but has hit three batters and walked three more as her 0-1 pitch is low. Bland hits 318 with two outs. Not a bad, it's an impressive some bad numbers when the uh, pressure's on for her. Impressive freshman season for Bland. Again, part of this prolific Nebraska offense, but she's way out in front of an off-speed pitch there. Count moves to one and two. That was a great pitch there by Derkowski. Got the crowd into it now too. So Michigan trying to keep momentum here. It's a one, two, two out top five. Derkowski versus Bland. Derkowski deals and this ball is lifted straight up into the air, but foul over that third base dugout. Those bleachers have gotten some work today. Mm. If only you were over there with your elite hands, <laughs> snag all those foul balls. I don't know if I'm this good. I think I just could have maybe got the first one is all, but <laughs> I appreciate it. We'll do the one-two over. Durkowski sets, fires, deals, fastball. A lot of heat on that one, but it's upstairs, so count moves to two and two. Can feel the crowd willing Durkowski on here. It, it's been a back and forth game, and Michigan's just regained the momentum. This would be Big for the Wolverines. Durkowski kicks, fires, fastball, swung on and missed. Durkowski shucking the Cornhuskers in the fifth. And the Wolverines get to grab their bats again and do battle. The score all knotted up at two. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth here. Nebraska two, Michigan two on WCBN Sports. Yeah, Durkowski, great inning there, adding to her strikeout tally with some, some nasty off speed there, followed with some, some heat upstairs. Able to get some, some batter swinging. As we've got the old, uh, try to track the, the item under the block M on the scoreboard here. It looks like the softball is under the second M Certainly was. Speaking of M's, mm. block M's, Michigan football coach, the new one, Sharon Moore is in attendance today. The head coach. Head coach. It's always nice to see athletes supporting athletes. and Yes, it is. Coaches supporting other programs. And you know, if obviously, Michigan football, three straight really successful seasons, but... I heard he's actually scouting broadcasters oh, to come, <laughs> yeah, come help out. Not that the current uh, try. Maybe broadcasters maybe you can are. tell him about how great your hands are. Mm. Want me to talk to him later? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> man, he's, did he's I make a fool of myself no, mentioning you that? Didn't. You just are partnered with a. <laughs> I don't know. I just I Hands like, or not, I like, Maddie Erickson. I like up the that bat comment now. as Kenny delivers to Erickson off the plate for ball one. Erickson, that ground ball out that turned into an RBI though, back in the first and hitting 364 on the season. The meat of the order now for the Wolverines is Kenny Roxon deals and swung on pitch was skipping into the catcher's glove of Breadwell, but. Nonetheless, Erickson swung and missed, so count one and one. Bottom five. Erickson leading off this fifth inning for the Wolverines, looking to capitalize on the momentum of the past few innings. And Erickson chops one up the middle and into center. So leadoff runner is on for Michigan. The nice response there. 
after swinging and missing on the previous one down and low. Able to punch that one up the middle past the Billy Andrews of short, out outstretched. Getting the jersey a little dirty, unfortunately unable to corral that one in, but good piece of hit in there by Erickson. We got Kiki Thole. Kiki Thole. Digs in from Michigan, reigning Big Ten Player of the Week. 12 homers, 10 of which come in the recent stretch. Kinney deals, off-speed pitch swung on by Thole and missed, so count 0-1. Kinney's had some good off-speed since she's come in recently. You can really see why she's been such a great pitcher this season for Nebraska. Runner on first for the Wolverines. The 0-1 delivery is. She goes back to the off speed there. Worked at by Thull and called strike two. So 0-2 count on Thull. Kenny's 15 and 10 on the season. Run 123 innings. The 0-2 delivery here is lined down the left field line and just foul. Thull got a good chunk of her bat to that ball and we're just a yard or so away from a big hit in this ball game. So she's here for maybe, you know, get some get some game changing moments. We've got Della Monica pinch running at first as a, a fastball is upstairs. I'm not sure we caught that there, but now we did. Now we did and that's where she's been for this entire at bat. Number 17 <laughs> for the Wolverines. Three stolen bases on the year for her, so makes sense to put her out there. Next pitch was high, so the one two delivery here from Kinney is fouled off by Thole. So Kiki Thole will live to see a sixth pitch in this at bat. No outs, bottom five. Runner on first for the Wolverines. 2 2 ball game. It's been a fun one, folks. These two teams have played some, some good ball and they're delivering here as Kenny delivers and it's a liner straight to the third baseman. Caught by Gray and the, the runner, Della Monica, went. Gray threw it back over to first and just like that, two outs in this inning as Michigan gets doubled up on a line out by Thole. It's a great piece of fielding there by, by the third baseman. Heads up two to make sure not to make sure, but to get the out at first as well. That ball is kind of rifled right at her. Tough play. It kind of looked like Della Monica was running anyway, regardless of the outcome of that pitch. And ball just ripped it right at Sydney Gray, who's made two of the biggest plays of this game, that double to score two in the top of the fourth for Nebraska, and then that double play on the line out there by Folso eliminates the Michigan runner here in the bottom of the fifth, and kind of a hush has fallen over this crowd as Valamont digs in. Two outs here, bottom five. A walk and a hit for Valamont today. It's been another productive day behind the plate for her. Kenny delivers, and that ball skips into the protection for Breadwell, so it'll be a 1-0 count. Almont had a hit and an RBI in the midweek game as well as she's set to face the 1-0 pitch. That's low. Gets away from Breadwell. It'll be 2-0. Two outs, bottom five. Kenny back-to-back -back pitches. Pretty much in the dirt before they've seen the plate, so looking to maybe get that release figured back out. Kenny delivers again, and Valamont lays off it, and this ball is called a strike. It's a good, good rebound pitch. Heater in. Heater is a good term for that. Had some velocity there. 
from Kaylin Kinney, who sets and delivers the 2-1. High hopper. Billy Andrews comes across second base to make the play. Sidearm wow. throw on to first to get the out. Woo! I'm not even sure Kanata knew that she was coming across. I'm sure there was some verbal exchange there, but wow, what a play that was. Andrews caught it on the high hop and had to adjust the arm angle just a hair to make the play. But as mentioned, she's been quite the player for Nebraska this season. Putting all that senior experience she's, or all the experience she's had over the previous years to play there. So we'll head to the top of the six. Derkowski's still in the circle for the Wolverines. And folks, it's been a fun one. Sealer. Led the game off with a double in the bottom of the first for Michigan and came around to score on a Maddie Erickson ground ball to shortstop. Nebraska was quiet until the fourth. Couple walks and hits by pitches. And then a Sydney Gray double scored two. Michigan loaded the bases twice in the fourth, only delivered one run with two outs. And that's how we are where we are. 2-2, two, two, top six. Yeah, it's been a good battle so far. Maybe not the most exciting. Obviously, runs are always fun to watch, but got some good plays made by fielders and some good pitching going on, too. Certainly been is. Really seen Durkowski going, going the long way here. 93 pitches so far. Five Ks, three walks, two earned runs. As Brooke Andrews digs in for Nebraska for two today, the senior is hitting 321 on the senior. Derkowski in the circle, left foot back, rocks back to it. Pivots to the right, fires a fastball in there for strike one. Alumni field at Carroll Hutchins Stadium in the alumni complex. A lot of names, obviously, Carol Hutchins. All time for Michigan as Durkowski deals. This ball is lifted into the infield. That'll be Ilaqua underneath it. Makes the play easily there, and now one out, top six. Good play by her. It's not easy coming in, being pitch hit, or being, being subbed in and coming in, uh, not always easy. Be ready for everything, and there she was. Caitlin Neal steps in. She's 0 for 1 with a walk today. She'll take Durkowski's off speed for strike one. I believe she was one of the few that was hit in, in the string of hit by pitches that Durkowski had in the fourth. I believe that is true as well. Kowski rocks and fires the 0-1s upstairs. Neal lays off. Count moves to 1-1. One one. Top six, one out. Only one hit for Nebraska tonight, provided by Sidney Gray. And it was a big one. RBI, two RBI double. We gave Nebraska the lead for a moment before Michigan got it back in the bottom of the fourth. We're in the top of the six now, though, as Durkowski deals an off-speed in there for strike two to Caitlin Neal. We saw the previous pitch almost had, it was a kind of a riser, almost had Neil pulling the trigger on it, but she held back, and then that one off speed. Derkowski sets. Here comes the one two. Fastball upstairs. Swung on and missed by Neil. Strikeout. Real good uh, command there by Derkowski to. Keep switching back and forth, get the batter guessing, second guessing maybe at that pitch release, what she's going with. As Gray digs in and lines one into right center, but Conway is able to track this one down. So quick inning for the Wolverines, highlighted by Durkowski's sixth strikeout of the evening. As we head to the bottom of the sixth, I tell you, Conway has done a good job of covering center field tonight for the Wolverines. Yeah, she has, and better get her batting gloves on real quickly because she's out there, I believe, as long as she's not pitch hit for. 
She'll be out there hitting 237 on the year so far. Got a single. Was a it's that bunt single that yeah. she reached on, and she's done a good job reaching base though this season. 366. So it's produced offensively as. Kinney's back in the circle for Nebraska, and you'd expect her to be there the rest of the way unless things get a little out of hand. But 2-2 ball game, bottom six. It's been a fun one here in Ann Arbor. Sun is set, beautiful kind of pink outline in the distance. Lights are on here, Carroll Hutchins Stadium. Justin. Crowd still out in full support. Ah, bad news actually. The bouncy house has appeared oh, to be getting ready deflated. to packed up. So, unfortunately, on, you will man. not hear us talk about that anymore for the rest of the game. <sighs> Come on. Some would say I give the best bouncy house coverage oh my goodness. at the station. Best hands and best bouncy I house coverage? I never said best hands. But, I Sharon, if you are out there, I'll take it <laughs> off. <laughs> As back mentioned, to yeah, yeah, back to the <laughs> softball. It's been, it's been truly, truly, truly has been a great game here tonight, and two of the Big Ten's best. It's Kenny deals to Conway, who lays off that first pitch low and away. 1-0 count here. Some pop in the bat of Janisa Conway. Eight home runs this year, two doubles, four triples. Plenty of speed as well. Evidenced by reaching on that bunt single as Kenny sets, rocks back onto that left foot, now pivots to the right, fires, and fastball is up and away for ball two. Conway, if she can get on base, tends to be uh, pretty effective out there, so she'll be looking to get on and steal some bags. She watches. Ball three go by. Pitch was upstairs. So 3-0 count to Janisa Conway. Michigan successful so far tonight at getting runners on early in innings, getting that leadoff runner on would be key here in this 2-2 ball game. But Conway takes an off-speed pitch in there for a strike from Kinney. So 3-1 count. Batter and pitcher will go over their routine, lock into their keys and what's important here. Big moments down the stretch as Kenny deals. The three one is fouled back and out of the stadium. A work by Kenny working back in this count here. And another three two count. There's been plenty of them tonight at kind of epitomizes how close this game has been. It's been hard fought, quality, quality softball. Kenny delivers the 3-2 low and away. And Janisa Conway reaches first for the second time tonight. That's Big at bat there. Good work by her, scary sight for Nebraska to have to deal with her on the base. Seven, nine attempts on the year, seven successful. Bags stolen. As Stevenson digs in. Don't say it. I will not mention that she won Big Ten Freshman <laughs> of the Week for the second time this season, mm -hmm. last week. It's been quiet today, though. 0 for 2. No plays in the field either. But she looks at Kenny's first pitch. Low. Count moves to 1-0. Runner on first is Conway, as mentioned. Threat to steal a bag. Kenny rocks and fires the 1 0. This one's low as well. So, starting to see that low miss out of Kaylin Kinney and Wolverines being patient. Got a little mound visit coming here. Redwell going out to her, you know, just talking about whatever they talk about. Make sure that everyone's aware. Situation. It's tough. Six in, or six, bottom of the sixth. Tie ball game. As I believe this is Sandstorm by Darude ringing out. Yeah. Well, Sandstorm got us dancing a little bit here. Mm. 
He's trying to stay warm also. Conway on first, 2-0 pitch, no outs, bottom six. Stevenson looks at another Kenny delivery that's in the dirt, so 3-0 count here. We've seen many of these by There's Kenny so far in the few innings she's cer pitched. Certainly have. She was able to get two back on Conway before eventually walking her, but 3-0 count here again. Here comes a delivery, and again, it's low, so Michigan's got runners on first and second to open the bottom of the sixth in a 2-2 ball game. With uh, Costales up here, too. 375 runners in scoring position. Freshman looks to add to that as it looks like some some Nebraska players are moving out to the bullpen here. Emerson Cope, I believe, is warming up out there. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. It's Right now it's Ravel out there talking to Kenny now, probably just trying to give the next pitcher in relief some time to get loose here, but also settle down. Nebraska not known Kenny. for their defensive uh, efforts. Offensive is mainly their game. Average around 6.1 runs per game. Seventh in the doubles on the year. 76 of them. So they're looking to get out of this predicament here. And Costales digs in and takes that pitch low. So count moves to 1-0. Again, runners first and second. Back-to-back -back walks for the Wolverines. We're in the bottom of the six. It's Nebraska two, Michigan two. One hit for the Huskers, five for the Wolverines. Walks and hits by pitch have played a large role in this game as Kenny deals. This one's a little bit higher, but still below the strike zone. So count moves to 2-0 on Costales. Costales, five homers on the year. Looked like she nodded after that pitch came in. Like, I'm seeing that one. Kenny Rocks steals the 2-0. This one also low, so an inability to get the pitches up in the zone right now for Kaylin Kinney. This is three straight 3-0 counts to open the bottom of the sixth. And As we get set for the fourth pitch of the at-bat, this one's low as well, and Costales reaches first, and Nebraska, I'm sure, will be turning to that bullpen. Shortly, if not now, although it seems like we're taking a Brief pause. I'm not sure what for. I'm seeing some smoke coming out of the Nebraska dugout. Looks like they're maybe looking at a space heater smoking a little bit. Bonnie Thole went to work her magic on it, see what's going on. But some Go Blue chants ring out with the U of M softball players and the fans. And uh, Zella McVeigh digs in. The all dangerous McVeigh. She came up with the bases loaded before and now has another opportunity here, bottom six, and she'll take another pitch for a ball. Kenny is on the struggle bus right now, and Nebraska did an excellent job clawing back into this game, taking the lead, but bases loaded, no outs, bottom six. Kenny's thrown now nine, excuse me, 10 straight balls. We'll see if there's an 11th. There's not there you go. strike one, and that was a take all day from Ella McVeigh. Good work by Kinney, though, finally getting into it. Hopefully use it to start stringing together some strikes, maybe the old triple play here. <laughs> As Kinney delivers again, this one's low, chopped to first. Bacon throws home, play at the plate is in time. So force out at home, Conway... Did not score. McVeigh reached first. A similar outcome to her previous attempt with the bases loaded. So ideal outcome there for Nebraska. No runs scored. 
Second time Nebraska's been able to get the out at the force at home to save some runs. And Ellie Sealer digs in one for one today, a couple walks as well. So big opportunity here for the junior. Kenny deals low and away for ball one. One out, bases loaded. Castales on second. We've got McVeigh on first as Kenny deals pitch in there for strike one. I believe it's Stevenson over there on third. 1-1 one, one pitch from Kinney is swung and fouled back <laughs> into the netting there. And a little funny as two staff members with the simultaneous duck out of the way, even though the net protected them there. But only human reaction when you see a large yellow object coming at your head. 1-2 pitch, one out, bottom six. Big spot here for Kaylin Kinney and the Cornhuskers. And she misses low and away, moving the count to two and two to Ellie Sealer. That one hoping to get Sealer to chase maybe on it. Unable to, but. Uh, Kinney in the stadium simultaneously take a breath as she deals. Strike three called on Ellie Sealer. Big out for the Cornhuskers. The old backwards K always feels great as a pitcher. Getting them to sit them down without them even swinging. Good comeback, too. And McKinney. the Wolverines have given away a, quite the opportunity here. But still a chance. As Indiana Langford digs in. 0 for 3 today. Bases loaded, two outs, bottom six, tie ball game. Kenny deals in there for strike one, and she's starting to find her mojo. Yeah, Langford back in, I believe, for Alakwa. Alakwa is a defensive replacement. Will not get the at bats, but the 0 1 here to Langford is swung on and fouled off over that third base side. So Kenny's one strike away from getting out of a jam that she put herself in. But to be fair, if you're going to dig a hole, you better bring a ladder. She certainly dug a hole. Question is, is the ladder long enough? The 0-2 just outside will set up a 1-2. Yeah, she's feeling herself after that one. Tell, even though <laughs> base is yeah. loaded, but she's thinks she knows how to get out of this. She's been here before. She has that left foot is back. She rocks onto it. Now back to the right. Pivots, fires off speed pitch is popped into the air, and right to the third baseman Gray, who makes the play. So Michigan unable to take advantage of the three free passes to start the sixth. We remain tied at two, heading to the top of the seventh. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Talk about jams. That was, that was one of those on, what are we talking here? I don't know, 275, whatever. You're heading towards Novi here in Michigan and Suddenly you hit one, five lanes wide, you're stuck. Yeah. Then a little bobble, weave, one, two strikeouts later. Find an exit. Get a, get a pop else out. Found. Yep. Find <laughs> your way back on the highway a few miles later and some back roads. What a battle from Kaylin Kinney, though. There's a point in that where she threw 10 straight balls. Three consecutive 3-0 counts to start the inning. And then short hop back to first. First baseman Bacon through home. Got the force out there. And then a strikeout looking. 
And an infield pop up to third by Lankford and the Wolverines unable to take advantage. A base is loaded, no outs, but nonetheless, top seven. Durkowski still in the circle. It'll be Bella Bacon in the box for Nebraska. Her 100th and first pitch here on the night. Rakowski rocks and deals. This ball is fouled off. It was fastball up and in. She still got velocity like it was her first pitch there. Well said. Ball certainly feel all these players playing with a lot of emotion now. You can tell they're in the heat of the moment. Durkowski's set, rocks back, fires through. Fastball in there for strike two. A top seven, 2-2 two -two ball game. 0-2 oh count here for the batter, Bella Bacon. She hits about 542 when leading off. Dukowski sets and deals, and Bacon fouls it back off the screen and back onto the umpire. Caught his right calf. I think he'll be all right. The way that ball bounced off his calf, it was almost a solid wall out there. Yeah, you can tell he does his calf raises, eats his Wheaties. But we'll do the 0-2 over. Durkowski deals, foul tip just off the mitt. Of Valamont, unable to squeeze it, and again, we'll prepare for another 0-2 pitch. Durkowski's set, rocks back, fires through, off-speed pitch up, and is there room? There is! What an excellent play! Thole, Kiki Thole ran into the wall and made the play. That was a great play. The ball fouled off to the first baseline, almost nearly right into the net, but Thole able to run over there. Great job catching it and also not injuring herself on that as she seemingly face planted into the wall. It's a tough, great play there. We got Ava Breadwell up to bat for the Cornhuskers. Durkowski rips a fastball in there for strike one. Kiki Thol, impressive play. Hard to tell from her angle how much room there was. Clearly not very much, but just enough. Durkowski just misses low on the 0-1. So one out, top seven, 2-2 ball game in Ann Arbor. Wolverines playing host to Nebraska. Two teams over the 20, 25 win threshold this season. Delivered a good one so far today as Durkowski delivers an off-speed pitch into the strike zone, make it 1-2. Kowski rips the one-two in there and it's off the elbow of Breadwell. So she'll reach base. I believe that's the fourth hit batter tonight. That's Breadwell's second time getting for Durkowski. So Breadwell will I believe she had a uh, little pad on there, but if not, we'll probably get some ice bags. Wherever they're staying later tonight. Billy Andrews steps in, 380 on the season. 0 for 3 tonight, though. Durkowski's had her number. and Off-speed pitch that Andrews is way out in front of. Yeah, I think she's watched Durkowski throw a few fast ones in first pitch recently, and it's expecting that. Got changed up on. One out, here comes the 0-1 to Billy Andrews. It's a fastball upstairs. Durkowski missed her spot there. Count will move to one and one. Redwell, two, two steal attempts on the year, one successful. Well, something to keep an eye on, maybe not though. Here comes the 1-1, swung and fouled back by Andrews, just 
underneath that one. Runner on first is Breadwell, the catcher. He's been reach base twice tonight. Durkowski, six and a third so far, six Ks. Typical brilliant self, fires fastball upstairs for ball two. Count moves to two and two. It's also our score, 2-2. Two -two. Andrews, two home runs shy of 60 on the career for her. That would put her the sixth Big Ten softball player ever to hit that number. And Looking to add that. Put that into existence as here comes a 2-2 two -two is up and away. So, Andrews put a ride into one with the bases loaded a couple innings ago. Conway was able to range underneath it, but Dukowski's got the work the count now to 3 2. Runner on first, one out here, top seven. Fastball is upstairs, so we ball four. Billy Andrews will reach base for the first time tonight. Haven't seen any action in the Michigan bullpen, although we don't have a good angle at it at all. Blocked out by the sweep, kind of. Not sure the exact the right field line. stat keeping term for it, but uh, if Andrew were to get second here on a stolen base, put her two more stolen bases till she would hit the 50 homer, 50 stolen base club. Put her at 16 on the year, I believe, as well. She's I don't an know. impressive player. She obviously not the hit tonight that maybe we expected, but some. Excellent plays at shortstop. A lot of confidence, a lot of swagger as Durkowski deals to Kaneda. That pitch is uh, potentially off the plate for ball one. Kaneda reached on a walk back in the first, been quiet in the box since. One out, top seven, 1 0 count here. For Nebraska's two hitter. Durkowski rocks, deals, fires. Kaneda. Fouls one off over that wall down the left field line. So count will move to one and one. Wind has completely died down. Sun now well off to the west. Lights fully on here. Mr. Durkowski deals the one, one in there for strike two. A little delayed call there from the home plate umpire, but Nonetheless, the result the Michigan fans wanted. And they're just hoping to not hit into a double play here. Dukowski deals. Did she go? She did. The pitch was upstairs, but Kaneda went around. And Dukowski picks up strikeout number seven. That was fun. I think that was the riser there by Dukowski. Sorry, Durkowski in Canada. Not sure she wanted to swing at it. Unable to check well enough to keep that. Felt a little like she had made up her mind that she was ready to hit. Tough to lay off pitches at the eyes as Peyton Cody digs in. Three hitter for Nebraska has been productive tonight despite the 0 for 2 line. Couple walks as she swings and is out in front of that first pitch play and it's foot and a whole lot of action going on. It was a diving attempt by Erickson down the third base line. It's picked up and there was a play at home after it was bobbled. And then the home plate umpire settles everybody down and says, no, no, it's a foul ball. I was worried the umpire was about to get gunned at uh at the throw from third to home there, as he's standing out seemingly in front of home plate. Yeah, I the third base umpire had to kind of get out of the way of the ball after it hit Erickson's glove. It's a nice effort over there in the corner by Erickson. It's the reason they call it the hot corner. Ball was off the end of the bat, but still hit pretty hard. As some Gnarls Barkley gets going oh, on the don't speaker. get copyrighted here. Um, yes, that play was a little bit crazy. In the end, it ends up 
being strike one, I believe. Double check that we go along here, but Derkowski deals and that one just misses the plate. Runners on first and second, top seven, two out. Two two ball game here. So the count is officially one and one. Peyton Cody at the plate. Derkowski in the circle deals and Cody fire fouls it away. Souvenir, kind of, maybe, <laughs> not really. Uh, get to touch a college softball for a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> As we get set here, big one-two pitch upcoming. Durkowski, this ball is lined right at the second baseman. The play is made on at first. Great Indiana Langford, yeah. one hop. That Snag, one was there's a rocket right at her. Got the out at first, and the Wolverines get out of the jam. That was a great job there by Langford. An eye on the ball, hauling it in. And getting the throw off fast enough, too. Play well, was so quick, I... Blanked on her name for a second. Mm. I guess, right. to be fair, Langford and Alakwa have kind of... They've had some fun out there switching around. Switched off <laughs> for an inning, but regardless, excellent play there. Ball was hit hard by Cody, but right at Lankford. As we get set for the bottom of the seventh, Michigan got one in the bottom of the first. Leadoff double by Sealer, came home on a ground ball by Erickson. Nebraska, their one hit of the night was a big one. Sidney Gray delivered a double to left center that scored two in the top of the fourth. Michigan left them loaded in the bottom of the fourth, although they did pick up a run on a bases loaded walk. It's been zero since. Two runs, one hit for Nebraska. Two runs, five hits for the Wolverines. And Michigan had a couple walk-offs last week at home against Iowa. Have a chance to do so here in the bottom of the seventh. It's team has given this crowd a lot to cheer about as of late. I think where Michigan would like to improve on in this game in this final inning if they could. Obviously, any run wins it for them, but 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position. It's, uh, any improvement on that at this point would see them as victors. As Kinney's back out there dealing for the Cornhuskers. First pitch was low to Matty Erickson. Sophomore third baseman hitting 370, eight homers on the season. Here's the 1-0 in there for strike one. Nine homers would mean a win for the Wolverines. It's been quite the battle here in Ann Arbor as Kenny deals. This one skips into Breadwell and you have to wonder how long Kenny has and if how many walks she has kind of left in the tank before that bullpen is in use for Nebraska. Yeah, we've seen a few slip out. I don't know if maybe the cold not helping her, her grip on some of these. Deals a fastball, I suppose upstairs, potentially off the plate. Again, tough to tell from this angle where exactly that missed. It's been, from my vantage point, a small zone tonight. Nonetheless, 3-1 pitch here from Kinney is swung on, chopped up the middle. Nice play made there by Kaneda. Throws on to get the out at first. Little backhand on the high hop. As Key Keith Ole steps in, made the great play up against this, this wall here by the first base line. A lot of pop in the bat. Michigan's leading home run uh, batter. Ten home runs. Ten of those, sorry, of her 12 have come in the last 16 games. So Certainly been a prominent part of, of her 
her game recently as she takes that first pitch from Kinney for strike one. It was off speed. So one out, bottom seven. Kinney comes back with a fastball here on 0-1. That's upstairs. Make it 1-1. Feet start stomping from the fans. As Kenny deals fastball in there low and nice block by Breadwell. It, you can feel the, the hush come over the crowd before every pitch, the sense of anticipation as one swing could end this game. Here's the 2 1. In there for strike two. It's been a Patient approach here for the Wolverines to start this seventh. Bottom half of the seventh here. 2-2 ball game. Been a good one. Really has been. And, and we've got a 2-2 count here. Kenny deals. That's low. And Thole was able to hold on there. No swing. Hard. Kenny. Kenny coming in, giving three and some odd innings. No runs allowed. A few strikeouts, too. There's another one there. It's in the dirt, so they'll throw over to first, and Kiki Thole is retired. So two outs here in the seventh. It, Kenny did walk in that run, but it wasn't her run. Uh, she's been done a good job in relief of Sarah Harness. Edge number. Strikeout number three on the day for her and 72 on the year, or 71, I'm sorry, on the As year for her. Lily Valamont digs in. Kaylin Kinney in the circle. Excellent job for Nebraska. Starting to find her groove here. She struggled as she deals strike one. She struggled in that sixth. Walked the first three batters she saw. Michigan unable to take advantage and now two outs, bottom of the seventh. 0-1 count to Valamon. It's off-speed pitch that's low. One and one. Yeah, Valamont watched the fast go by her in the first pitch and off-speed kind of a little low and off to the left there. See what uh, Kinney comes back with for the third pitch of the at-bat. The drama builds here, two outs, bottom seven. Kenny delivers, and Valamont fouls that off. Oh, so close to the Nebraska dugout opening. It's always a bit of a scary one, but count yeah. remains one, two. Maybe the Oakland A's have uh, had, a, for a while, an exposed dugout. I never, they're always scary to me. Kenny delivers, this one skips into the dirt, and I believe it hit Valamont. He's running down to first quickly. It did, and she will remain. So Michigan's got a runner on here, and looks like Valamont will remain. No pinch running here for now, as Janisa Conway will dig in. The freshman chance to make a big impact here in her first season on the Wolverines. I believe that's four at bats for uh, Valamont and three. Three times reaching first. Not too bad of a night. And Conway. One hit was a, was one of the runs early on in the game as well. Mentioned and looking to add to that. Conway reached base twice tonight. Faces Kinney and swings at the first pitch. An aggressive cut that's fouled back. Oh, the big one there. Certainly was. It was a lash of some vigor and enthusiasm. Mm. Adrenaline. Mm. Runner on first is Valamont. Two outs here, 0-1 count, bottom seven, tie ball game. Here's the pitch. In there for strike two. Kinney caught the corner. 
And Conway falls behind 0-2. Again, that hush falls over the crowd here at Carroll Hutchins Stadium. And Kenny delivers the 0-2. Check swing there. Nobody down, no umpire down at third in this situation to appeal the check to, but so they will at first. And Conway held off, so we'll have a 1-2. Almont at first. Here comes Conway with the delivery. Excuse me, Kinney with the delivery. Conway takes. We go 2 2. Good take there. It's always antsy, you know, you got the two strikes on you, especially starting 0 and 2. And you got to stay, you got to protect yourself up there or not. 2 2 count here. Kenny rocks and deals. This one low as well. So Conway has worked. Back into this at bat, 3-2 pitch up coming with two outs. I mean, Valmont will be running, so anything in the gap could potentially end it here. The Huskers outfield shifting slightly. Kenny rocks back and deals the 3-2. This ball is fouled down the left field line over the little wall out there. So we'll do the 3-2 again. Kenny doesn't really like pitching up too much in the zone. A lot of it's down, trying to get people to chase out down and out the zone or force some grounders or some, not that that matters too much with two outs, but you can get the force at second if needed. Certainly trying to keep the ball in the infield here if you are in Nebraska. So Kenny rocks back, fires the 3-2. Conway swings. Right at Billy Andrews, bad hop though. It ate her up. And Janissa Conway is gonna reach for the third time tonight on an error by shortstop Billy Andrews. That was a tough hop on that last hop right before it reached her glove. So we get a replay out there on the Jumbotron. That thing skipped up pretty quickly there. Yeah, it's a tough one. Able to prevent it from going in the outfield. The Valmont not able to advance to third, but Conway at first, Valmont, Valmont second. They've done a great job tonight reaching base. Stevenson As looks to get one of them in. Stevenson takes the first pitch from Kenny Low, so 1-0 count. Runner on second is Valmont. Michigan trying to put together a run here with two outs in the bottom of the seventh to walk it off and Stevenson 0 for 2 today. We'll take a pitch from Kinney that catches the strike zone and it'll be 1-1. One, one. It's been tightly contested throughout. We've been knotted at two since the fourth. Michigan has had bases loaded opportunities in the fourth and the sixth and they've got a chance here with a runner on second. As this ball is lifted into second, diving play by Kaneda. It was a little blooper, it fell short of her glove. Everybody's safe, and the Wolverines have them loaded again. Wow, that was a great attempt there by Kaneda. That ball was kind of weirdly flying in the air. Came off the bat, some spin on it. Good diving attempt, but fortunately not able to haul it in. Couple so St Stevenson, Conway, and Valmont all on base here. Couple of tough setting up for the comeback comeback player oh, as of late, the walk off. Salas had a walk off last week against Iowa, chance to do it, kick off the series against Nebraska with one here. Base is loaded, anyway she reaches, Michigan wins. Two outs, two two, bottom seventh. Couple bad breaks for Nebraska, bad hop for but this is Billy Andrews and then a soft little liner that fell just before the outstretched glove of Kaneda. As weird as it is, almost seems when Kinney's most comfortable base is loaded. Two outs here. Kinney delivers. Castales chops one to, towards third base. It's a close play at third and a diving effort by Gray. Beats the sliding Conway. I believe they will review this, but they called her out. 
umpire was standing in a good position, but uh, a little review never hurt nobody. And they're going to take a check, and, and my goodness, this has been a thrilling game, and what a way for it to end. I, my eyes say she was out. It was the correct call, but Conway hustled, and it was a tough play for the third baseman, Gray, who's come up big so far for Nebraska. She had to come in and go, and we get that first look at it. Wow. And Gray beat her. What a play. By half a foot at most. To field that, she's in front of the third baseline when she's fielding it, knowing one of the faster players on the Wolverines is sprinting down towards that third ba base and <laughs> to turn around and still be able to dive and beat the base runner. Well, not officially, but uh, the call on the field said so. And yeah, believe we will be having some extra softball here tonight. What a better Friday night than this. Not much. Couldn't have asked for one. Only a few degrees warmer would be a little nice. Eh. That ain't Michigan if it's not cold in late April, Dan. Fair point. As officially the call on the field is confirmed. So Nebraska survives. Bases loaded jams in the fourth, sixth, and seventh, only surrendering one run in those opportunities. So we'll go to the eighth. We're going to extras. Why not? It's been a scrappy battle. Maybe not the most prolific offense that we expected. But two teams fighting hard, some clutch pitching, some clutch defense. I think this game is deserving of some extra innings. As we've got a Substitution Dur here. Turkowski back out, throwing pitches for the Wolverines. All reliable. 123 Dur so far in this game. Durkowski still in the circle, but Carcaburro takes over at first for Kiki Thol. As mentioned, Durkowski, seven innings so far, one hit, two runs, two earned, four base on balls, I believe four hit by pitches as well. Pitch count of 123. Nebraska unable to get truly solid contact, solid bat on ball, but been able to scrap together two runs, and again, that big hit in the fourth by Sidney Gray, the third baseman, who's had quite the night tonight for the Huskers. Seemed to do a little bit of it all for them. As Bland digs in, Durkowski deals, off-speed pitch in there for strike one. Bland unable to reach base so far in this game. Still hitting above 300. It's about 320 in the leadoff spot. Kowski winds, deals the 0-1. It still had some zip on it, but it just misses the zone. We move to a 1-1. Samantha Bland 0 for 3 tonight. Freshman left fielder. Zerkowski rocks and deals. This ball is fouled back, so we'll move to 1-2. It was a fastball. Up in on the hands, fouled back kind of over the first base side. Yeah, Durkowski giving up those runs in the fourth, but not let that affect her game much at all since. The one two pitch from Durkowski is high and wide. That gets to the backstop. As I say that, Carcobura will collect and throw it back into Durkowski, who will reset before entering the circle. Had that high and wide miss a little bit tonight. That one, the worst of them by far. But we're ready for the 2-2 pitch. Rocks back on the left. Forward on the right. Fires off speed in there. That's fouled back. First base side. Woo! 
We'll redo the 2-2 here. Here comes Drakowski. That pitch is fouled off down the third baseline. So good battle here between Drakowski and Bland. Bland to staying open the alive. Top of the eighth. A few foul balls. Had the strikeout earlier in this game. Looking to change that in the fifth. We'll do the 2-2 over. Here comes Drakowski's pitch. Up and away for ball three. So full count has been worked by the batter, Samantha Bland. Lights are shining bright here at Alumni Field, Carroll Hutchins Stadium. The 3 twos on the way. This ball is lifted deep into the air and left. This ball is out of here. The freshman, Samantha Bland, gives the Cornhuskers the lead. Wow. On a 3-2 fastball, rocketed out into the night sky. That thing was crushed beyond the, beyond the lights over there in left field. Good battle by Bland there to make Drakowski eventually give her a pitch that she saw well and able to carry that one into a 3-2 lead for Nebraska. The top of the eighth here. And on the eighth pitch of the at bat, the freshman Bland goes yard. How about that for a freshman year memory? And Brooke Andrews steps in, 0 for 3 tonight, swings at a first pitch fastball from Durkowski. So two total hits for the Huskers, but they've been big ones. A two RBI double in the fourth, and now the go ahead home run in the eighth by Samantha Bland on a. Shot out to left field, 3-2 pitch, and Durkowski deals the 0-1. That's up and away, ball one. My goodness, it took the life out of this Michigan crowd. Our first run since the bottom of the fourth. Feels like it was only a matter of time before that Nebraska offense sparked to life, and Durkowski deals an off-speed pitch that's beautiful. Wow. Whether she swung or not, it was <laughs> called a strike, so we go 1-2. That Andrews kind of waving at nothing there, almost unsure where to put the bat. Kowski rocks back and deals the one-two. Fastball swung on and missed. That's a response there from Durkowski, her eighth K of the evening. It's a great response. Not backing down, throwing her stuff. She thinks it's going to work best. Sat her down. As Caitlin Neal digs in. Durkowski rocks and fires. Fastballs fouled off the net back into the infield. Strong net over here. I feel like these softballs are flying pretty far back onto the field after they hit it. Every Dirk strikeout, the event staff toss out some nice foam softballs for the crowd. and. One near us is seeming to ran out of once the toss. So I don't know if that's uh, yeah. eight eight Ks yeah. on the night for Durkowski. That a one missed upstairs to Neal. So it'll be one 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 out top eight. Durkowski delivers in the dirt for ball two. The difference right now a Samantha Bland home run to left that. Frankly, Sealer gave a courtesy run back, but that thing was gone off the bat. Beautiful yellow orb through the dark night sky. Strakowski deals here, and this ball's ripped right back up the middle. And it will be a single for Caitlin Neal. Great piece of hitting there. And Nebraska has doubled their hit total here in the top of the eighth. Isn't that crazy how the game can go? Nebraska able to take it to extras, minimal hits. But they're able to get people on base, whether it's hit by pitches or walks or whatever it may be. They're Sid leading now. Sidney Gray digs in, swings at the first pitch from Durkowski and fouls it back. A lot of souvenirs and actually look at the roof behind us now for the first time and seeing <laughs> 15 softballs stuck up there. It's uh, quite impressive, but... Gray's not added to that collection. She had 
Big hit in the fourth, two-run two double. And now lines one into center field. Conway plays it nicely, though. It'll be held to a single. So Derkowski starting to get hit here a little bit. Still not sure there's much action at all in the, in the Michigan bullpen. I, again, we have a tough angle here. I haven't seen anybody go down there. Not sure if anybody's ready. It, it is Jennifer Brundage out again for a quick meeting. It's 141 pitches now for Dukowski, and it's been a good night. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it her best stuff. Four walks, four hit by pitches. Navigated that well, but the one hit she gave up in regulation was a big one, two-run double to Gray. And then, of course, Bland's rope over the left field wall to open this eighth inning and give Nebraska the one run lead. Two runners on here for the Huskers, looking to add some insurance runs. It's a sophomore first baseman, Bella Bacon digs in. Dukowski winds, deals, fastball in there for strike one. One out here, top eight. Pitch number 143 from Durkowski is just off the plate for ball one. Yeah, Bacon hitting 333, running from scoring position. Put one in play. If it hits the outfield grass, almost certainly a run could score. Durkowski winds, deals. This ball is lifted into left field. Diving play by Sealer, who's got a chance to double up at second. The throw is just behind, just out of the outstretched reach of Langford, but Ellie Sealer with an excellent play out and left. What a sliding play there by, by the junior. And then to pop right back up and almost get Neal out as she returns to, to second. This is Ava Breadwell. Steps to the plate for Nebraska. Two outs, top eight. Huskers up 3-2, and Durkowski deals a fastball high. The difference right now, Samantha Bland, freshman. Home run out to left. Durkowski deals, this fastball is fouled back into the screen. Straight back. Count moves to one and one. Bland, the four hitter, her fifth home run of the season. 31st RBI of the year. Most of the sound you hear now is from that Nebraska dugout as Durkowski deals an off-speed pitch in there low. It's, it was, uh, as you'd expect, a very pro-Michigan crowd. They've been loud and energetic throughout, but Nebraska's production here early, and as we get into the later hours of the night, 9.36 here on the East Coast, Eastern time zone. Durkowski deals the one-two. This ball is rocketed foul down that third baseline. A little bit of a hush and subdue has come over the Michigan faithful. This would be a big win for Nebraska here, obviously the first of the series. They go home after this, and I believe play the first team in the Big Ten Conference, Northwestern. And then they look to play a series at Minnesota after that as well. Kowski deals a 2-2. This ball's floated into the air to center. Right at Janisa Conway, who makes the play. Michigan gets out of there, but the damage was done. Samantha Bland with a rope. That cleared the left field wall by a good 40, 50 feet. Has given Nebraska a one run edge as we go here to the bottom of the eighth. Michigan needs a run to keep it alive and they've struggled off of Kalen Kinney. 
Next up, we'll have McVeigh, Sealer, and Langford. Looking to will their Wolverines to victory here. It's back to the top of the order for the Wolverines after McVeigh. Kenny only allowed two hits, four walks though, but she's managed those nicely. One of those walks did enable a Michigan run. She got out of jams in the sixth and the seventh. The Wolverines had them loaded in both of those innings. In the sixth with no outs, unable to capitalize. And in the seventh, two outs, unable to capitalize. Wolverines one for 12 tonight with runners in scoring position, two for 18 with runners on base. And it's been two big pokes, excuse me, <clears throat> two big pokes by Nebraska that have given them this edge here. And some great fielding by, by Nebraska, some good defensive. They've been stuck bases loaded a few times in this game and been able to get out the jam other than the one time, I mean, nearly unscathed. So McVeigh steps up to the box. McVeigh digs in, the lefty one for three tonight. Kenny deals, this ball is chopped on the ground to Kaneda at second. Scoops it up, fires over to first, and one down here, bottom eight. Quick fielding there by Kaneda. It was made it look routine. Yeah. Number 66 has had a good night for Nebraska. A lot of them have. It's been it's been a gritty performance from these Cornhuskers. It's tough to come here and be able to keep up as well as they have. As Sealer takes the first pitch in there for strike one. She'll take her time and step in and score a run after her double to lead off in the first. It's been quiet since Kenny deals. Sealer lines to third, the play is made by Gray and the Wolverines are down to their final out. That was uh, another good heads up play by Gray. This one maybe not as hot as some of the others, but still, still came right at her and ready for that one. As Langford digs in, 0 for 4 today. She faces Kinney's first pitch that's low and away for ball one. Kinney's done an excellent job in relief tonight. Langford 364 with two outs. Needs that to go up and Kinney delivers a fastball in there on the corner for strike one. Michigan, as we mentioned earlier, undefeated here at home, outscoring opponents by whopping 71 to 28 tally and down to their final out here. But here's the 1-1 from Kinney. This is a bunt that's fair. Lankford running hard and she's gonna make it to first. The infield was back and she Lankford dropped down a beauty and the Wolverines have life with the tying run at first and the winning run at the plate. Can't get a, bu a bunt down much better than that. It's able to hit it and ha almost have it die seemingly right in between the the catcher, pitcher, and third baseman not allowing any of them to really get a good read on it. Well executed on 1-1 one, one there. Two outs as Erickson digs in. Faces Kenny again who skips one into the glove of Breadwell. Does a nice job of blocking it from getting to the backstop and letting Langford advance to second. So Langford on first. One ball, no strikes. The count to Erickson, two outs here. Nebraska three, Michigan two. Bottom eight, Kenny rocks, deals. Erickson rips one into the Nebraska dugout foul. 1-1. One, one. Fredwell's done a great job, kind of all game, keeping everything in front of her. Nothing able to get past too dangerously and Keep Nebraska in the game that way. And he rocks and fires, and Erickson again right at a Nebraska coach. Ate that one like a champ. In the dugout, I imagine she's seen her fair share yeah. of <laughs> foul balls. <laughs> Sitting right in the yeah. one of the few open spots in the dugout. I don't think it got her 
too bad. She's right back to the, the sheet. Right, yeah, right back to the uh, score sheet there. One, maybe, two. maybe a little asterisk on that one. Hit me. Kenny delivers the one, two. It's one swung on and lifted into the air to right field. Diving attempt has come on and played, but the ball is on the ground. Lankford's going home, play it. The plate skips away. Lankford's going to score. Erickson's going to hold it second, and we've got a tie ball game. What a hit. They able to drop it just beyond the outstretched hand of Neal. Unable to make a play on it. And the running by Langford. First the bunt, out, out running it to get the first, to give their team the opportunity, then to go from first to home as well as she did. And the Wolverines have tied it. Erickson with the ball that dropped just in front. This game ain't over. Of the glove of Neal as pinch runner is Jessica LeBeau. She represents the winning run on second as Kiki Thole will dig in, and only the third hit the Wolverines have been able to get off of Kinney this afternoon, who's gone four and a third since taking over in the fourth for Harness. Sarah Harness went three and a third, gave up two, and left the bases loaded, and Kinney was able to get out of that with only allowing one run. Kiki Thole, chance to walk it off here from Michigan. Puts up quite the night for the Wolverines. As it appears, Coach Thole talking to the umpire here. About some rules, maybe. The Thole tonight is. There appears to be a review going on. Maybe a, we saw the, the ball hit the back, the, the Nebraska bench netting. I'm not sure if that changes any, maybe base runners advancing again or something. Yeah, and Lankford clearly touched home plate. Yeah. And the ball was clearly not caught. Yep. I'm not sure how this would be flipped or what would change? Maybe the runner would move back to first on. I, I, I'm almost wondering if it's Nebraska, the ball maybe went out of play for a second, so then the runner advances from second to third. I'm not too sure, speculating here. Well, would Mich but why would Michigan would be the one to challenge that? Were they not? I believe Nebraska ah, is challenging it. I got you. That would be that would be tough if you're in Nebraska, you challenge it and they say, Oh actually runner <laughs> runner, runner, advances. runner advances a base. Yes. Kenny will toss a few pitches while we wait. Again, still not quite sure what we're looking at here and the video board is not I'll stay speculating. Giving us any help. I <laughs> yeah. Could potentially just be deciding where to eat later tonight. Mm. I just needed a moment had to change their reservation. It's been longer than normal game for softball. We're approaching the 10 o'clock hour. It's been a good one though. The crowd's still in here mostly. Some blankets are popping out now. Yes, they are. I may, my beanie may pop out in here in a second, mm. although this bucket hat is <laughs> quite nice. All yellow, a little blue, blue M on it, and then the also pure Abso Pure, the sponsor. The water sponsor, on based the out of local areas, I believe. Not that uh, we're paid by them by any means. Tastes like water, believe it or not. I, I find that most water does taste like water. You'd be surprised. Well, while we wait, we'll set the scene. No commercials here on WCBN, except for us, WCBN. Mm. Uh, if you enjoy listening to what, what we do, our coverage of Michigan softball, but as student radio broadcasters, Michigan athletics in general, I've, we're two seniors here, and I've had quite the pleasure to go on some elite road trips and cover some amazing games, and we don't receive any funding from the athletic department to do this. This is all 
through donation base. So if you are so inclined, you look up WCBN FM Ann Arbor. We even have coverage of the spring game. We do. The we have a lot. We have a lot coming up. Obviously, game two of this series, which is off to an awesome start, we will be covering that. Well, I, we will not be, unfortunately. Uh, but two other tough break for the viewers. <laughs> two other very impressive broadcasters will be on that call. We also have baseball. We have lacrosse tomorrow. Women's lacrosse team playing some excellent stuff this year. Been a good year for Michigan athletics. Obviously football national champions. We were lucky enough to be able to get some people to broadcast those games as well. This is a long review, by the way. It makes you feel like we're in the NBA or pro football here. Mm. Could be Fox Sport 1 just trying to get their ads in as the umpires now emerge. And I guess they were checking to see if Erickson touched first, and they say that she did. So, I don't know why it takes three minutes to figure that out, but it Sets did. up for a, a dancing Kiki Thole. Been able to stay warm out there. Oh, we are being told that it was a review of whether or not Indiana Langford left early. And she did not. So now Kenny deals... And Thole watches in, and here comes the intentional walk and the Boo Birds. Mm. What's the fun in this? Well, eh. for Kiki Thole, <laughs> it'll be a stroll <laughs> down to first. Well. And the pressure, possible chance to win it, will fall with Lily Valamont, the freshman. Gets the force out, too. It does. I, I do believe this is a smart play. Yeah, it's a very smart play. Three-fourths of the way there. Can he deliver his ball four? So, Foles on first. In the grand scheme of the game, her position does not matter, other than the force out for Nebraska. But the important runner is LeBeau, the pinch runner on second. And the important player for Michigan is Valamon in the box. And Kinney in the circle for the Huskers. Freshman looking to add uh, her RBI total. As she takes it year. low, the ball gets away from Breadwell. The runners will advance to second and third. So with one ball, no strikes, and force out is now gone. You have to wonder if maybe three more balls come this way. From Kinney, although it, they seem sad and it, it seems they're going to walk her as well. as That will load the bases and bring a force out at every base. And Janisa Conway will get the opportunity. Crowd doesn't like it, but this is smart yep. from Nebraska. Yep. Maybe you could argue maybe you want to take your chances. You certainly didn't want to take your chance with Thole, despite her tough night, reigning Big Ten Player of the Week, and it's been absolutely on fire as of late. And there's ball four, so Valamont gets to first. Conway had a great game so far. Almost beat it out to third on the... Bases were loaded last or a few innings ago. And here she is now. It's 300. The base is loaded. So I'm gonna add to that. Janisa Conway digs in. Kenny delivers on 0-0. Conway lays off for ball one. 1-0. One Feel the fans about a half inning ago weren't so happy, weren't weren't feeling it. Now here they are. Urging the home team on. An opportunity to win it here. Here's the 1-0. Conway takes for ball two. Kaylin Kinney has the count of 2-0. Bases loaded, two outs. We're in extras, bottom eight. Nebraska got one at the top of the eighth home run. Samantha Bland 
a bomb to left. Michigan has responded. Maddie Erickson, a big hit to drive in the run. Conway swinging, fouls it off on 2-0. But we're all knotted at three. Four hits for Nebraska, eight for the Wolverines. Durkowski's gone eight for Michigan. Kinney's gone four and a third for Nebraska. She delivers on 2-0. That pitch misses, and it's now 3-1. Janisa Conway's got an opportunity here. 3-1 count. She's getting the sign from Coach Thole. We'll see what it is here if she's got the trust to let her freshman swing away. Kinney delivers. Strike two. Caught the corner. The crowd was ready to explode. <laughs> but as she has done multiple times tonight, Kaylin Kinney lives to fight another pitch. Crowd's as rowdy as they've been. Kinney rock back, delivers the 3 2, swung on and missed. Wow! We want another inning of softball, <laughs> folks. What a pitch. That one kept rising a little more than Conway thought it would and able to sit her down. Heck of a performance there by Kinney to get out of that one, How? adding to her strikeout total. She keeps, keeps getting the bases loaded and keep, uh, might be the clutchest player we've seen in a <laughs> while, honestly. But, uh, and uh, Michigan looking Finally, through a new pitcher now. Yeah. We've got a pitching change. Durkowski went eight through a lot of pitches. Uh, don't have those numbers in front of me right now. 40 something, maybe. But well into the triple digits, and her night is done. It will be Hannah George. 149. Wow. So it'll be Hannah George. That's a lot of them. Let relief me tell you. for Michigan. Yes, it is. That's. Uh, I'm not sure I can count that high, to be honest. George was used in last weekend's matchup against Iowa, had two wins. She's a grad student, uh, joined the Wolverines from UNC. Just looking to maybe get another hold here, possible win, not a hold. Certainly is top nine, three three ball game here at Alumni Field at Carroll Hutchins Stadium. It's been extremely competitive throughout, and we've got a defensive substitution as well. It's Avery Fantucci in at third now for Michigan. Those are just tuning on. Sealer in left, Conway in right. Stephen, excuse me, Conway in center, Stevenson in right. McVeigh and Lankford up the middle. Foles over at first and now Fantucci at third with George in the circle. And she delivers her first pitch low for ball one to Valamont, who's behind the dish for the Wolverines. Billy Andrews steps in. She reached in her last at bat on a walk. 0 for 3 tonight, but 380 average on the season. Shortstop. Faces the 0-1 from George, and that one's ripped in there for strike one. That one getting some encouragement from the fans, too. Not easy facing number six for Nebraska. George rocks and deals. This ball is ripped down the right field line, but foul. Duh. That's some venom behind it. Oh. <laughs> Little awkward throw back into the <laughs> infield, but <laughs> they've got it all sorted now. It's a one-two <laughs> count on Billy Andrews. No outs, top nine. Keeping Fantucci on her toes out there. Yeah, that, that ball got by the shortstop. They're having a laugh about it now as George will rock and deal the one-two. Off speed's chopped up the middle, and it gets through. So. Can't keep her quiet forever. Billy Andrews reaches first for the second time in a row, and Nebraska's got a base runner on to lead off the top of the ninth. Good piece of hitting there. Seeing someone different finally. 
for uh, Nebraska maybe helped uh, Andrew out a bit. We've got a train coming by. Yeah, it's, it's always fun. It's that time of the night. It is. <laughs> Isn't that scary? Yeah, it is. It's It's been a fun game, though. It has. Wouldn't, wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Runner on first. George deals to Kaneda, who fakes a bunt, pulls back, ball one. Scariest part about uh, Billy Andrews there, 13 stolen attempts, 13 successes. Yep. So you <laughs> got to keep her off the base, really, to 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 – Keep her from doing Michigan anything. Gonna it's tough. have to grind here. George Rocks deals the 0-1. Bunt is down successfully. Only play is at first. It's made. So Fantucci comes in, makes a nice play. Good cover there by Langford coming from second to get the bag at first. But Nebraska has Andrews in scoring position with her aforementioned speed. A potential hit could give Nebraska the lead. And and Peyton Cody steps in 0 for 3 tonight, but. Some solid oh, contact yeah. on the ball. It's a little unlucky. I believe she's flown out to Conway a couple times out in center. George deals. This ball ripped right back to George. Tried to check the runner, but Andrew's too quick. The play is made at first, so two outs, top nine. That was a great play there by George. Keep that one from rolling right back up the middle. There's a one hopper that kind of skidded a, along that sort of dirt, fake dirt that they've got down there on the field. And George wisely chose to get this, the safe out. So two outs, top nine. Samantha Bland steps in and rips a ground ball to second. Easy hop for Langford. Over to first. The Wolverines get out of the jam. Leave a runner stranded at third. We head to the bottom of the ninth, still knotted at three. Michigan... Again, another opportunity to win it here. Some great defensive work by the Wolverines to work to, to get back in that one. Not an easy play, or mm, probably easy for <laughs> Indiana Langford there, but uh, makes it look easy, let me say that. I'll tell you, that took a bit of a higher hop than I anticipated, yeah. kind of at the last moment. She adjusted well. Nice smooth throw over to first to beat the runner by quite a few steps. and. It'll be Stevenson, Costales, and McVeigh for the Wolverines before the top of the order. Seven, eight, nine, barring any substitutions. Again, you're listening to WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan softball. We've got a good one here. All knotted at three. Kaylin Kinney has come on. Gone four and two thirds. Four hits, one earned run. The six walks have caused a bit of an issue, but four strikeouts. She relieved Sarah Harness in that fourth inning. Pitch count already at 106 as well. So this uh, Quick has check. been a complete outing for Kaylin Kinney. And Quick check in across the way. This game's been over for a while now, but uh, your Wolverines. In baseball, we're able to be victorious over the that team down south, as we should say. Kenny delivers to Stevenson, skips in there for ball one. Good stop again. Said that numerous times by Breadwell. Stevenson, the Michigan native, looking to walk her team off here, and she takes strike one there. That Caught the outside corner. Good pitch from Kinney. Ellis Stevenson has been quiet. The freshman from Algonac, Michigan. Blue hit her first home run of her career the other weekend. Maybe add to that. Her second home run would certainly elicit a loud noise from this crowd. <laughs> Ball to the previous pitch. Now Stevenson chops one to third. Call the foul. She was out anyway, so she'll be thankful about that. And we've got a 2-2 upcoming. Nebraska three, Michigan three. Michigan got one early. Bottom of the first, Ellie Sealer leadoff double. Nebraska, their one hit in regulation was a two-run double in the fourth after Durkowski had some command issues, walked some runners, hit some 
hit a few runners. Michigan responded in the fourth, but as Kenny deals the 2-2 two -two and it's chopped foul by Stevenson. Michigan stranded, left the bases loaded in the sixth, seventh, and eighth. Only been able to muster one run out of it. They needed that one run as Kenny deals the 2-2 that bounces in front of Breadwell. And we've got a 3-2 count now. No outs, top, but excuse me, bottom nine. Ella Stevenson steps in. It was Samantha Bland's top eight. And then Matty Erickson delivered the RBI knock that Indiana Langford scored on bottom eight. That's what's been going on here in extras. A scoreless top nine for Nebraska, and now a pivotal 3-2 pitch here to Stevenson from Kinney, and this is swung on and fouled. Some footwork by Bonnie Thole to get out of the way. Kinney's up uh, above, I think, 110 pitches in relief, I believe that. But uh, doing a great job out there, four strikeouts, but most importantly, only one run. And he rocks and deals a 3-2 again, fouled away. So excellent battle here for Ella Stevenson. Singled back in the seventh. Reached on a walk in the sixth and then unable to reach in the second and fourth. So fifth appearance tonight. Kenny deals. This ball's hit hard. Andrews moves right, gobbles it up, makes the throw on over to first, and Stevenson is put out. First out here, bottom of the ninth. Nice play by Billy Andrews at short. That was smooth by the, the shortstop there. Cleanly into her glove and out of her glove over to the first baseman. As Ava Costales will dig in. Freshman has reached on two walks today. Ground out and fielder's choice as well. So 0 for 2 on the stat sheet. Had a walk off last week against Iowa. Would love another one here against Nebraska. Would take a big fly to do it. Took the first pitch in for a ball, so 1 0. Kenny rocks and fires. This ball is lifted high oh. into the Ann Arbor night. How about that? Ava Costales touch them all. The Wolverines are walk off winners. Wow. Number six. What a moment for the freshman. Number six on the year for her. Second walk off in a matter of weeks. I mean, what a time to step up. Nebraska keep clawing back, trying to trying to get this, this away victory first of the series. And she comes in and says, no, no, this is mine. Ava. 11 to 0 at, at home for the Wolverines. And they look dire. For a little bit for your, for the Wolverines. Samantha Bland went yard in the eighth. Michigan responded with the two strike hit by Erickson in the bottom of the eighth. That scored Langford all the way from first. And then Costales sent one high into the night sky and well, well over that left center field fence. Off kind of the, the wall of the baseball field out there. And the Wolverines remain perfect at home, 11 and 0. And we'll return tomorrow. WCBN Sports, you liked, you liked our coverage tonight? <laughs> Wait for it tomorrow. We'll be here all season, folks, and we appreciate you tuning in. I'd like to say, Dan, you've been a uh, good member of this club for a while now. Senior, I don't know if it's your last call or not, certainly mine. 
appreciate uh, everything you've done. Great broadcaster, great guy to, to team up with and call these games. And what a way to go out and then a walk-off call. Yeah, I, it's, um, it's been an honor. I, I do believe this is technically my last scheduled call. Uh, WCBN's given me a lot, a lot of experience, a lot of memories. Um, and man, I, yeah, what a way to finish it. I don't want to, you know, dwell on it too much here. And it'll be something that I cherish for the rest of my life. The people I met, the memories I made. It's the experience of getting to put on a headset like this. Yeah. You know, and a bucket hat, too. And a bucket hat all at the Whoa, same man. time and then call a walk-off homer. Look at that. I mean, and, and treated to such a great game. Nebraska played so hard. Uh, Kenny battled so much. Yeah. But I think in the end, the Michigan deserved to win that game, and they'd be kicking themselves if, if you know, they didn't take advantage of all the base runners that they got. But truly, truly blessed to have been a part of WCBN. And if this is the last one for me, and obviously I know it's the last one for you, I'm not sure there's anybody else I'd rather sign off with. So for one final time, we'll – WCBN will be back with more coverage tomorrow. We've got baseball, softball, lacrosse. I would tune into softball. This series is going to be fun, folks. So until then, we'll leave you as we always do. Good night and go blue.